right there what the heck is that like it's blurry that's gringor ironhide but we'll just call him a black orc war boss <laughs> well that's cool did you just print him so uh he's been actually printed for a while but uh these are some like some of the black orcs that i printed okay all right so you're you're Close. you're fully orcs and goblins on uh not by the map you see back there that's yeah. That's a very uh, Ulthal one map. We're not we're not playing there yeah. though. We're playing in the old world, sir. It's uh, possible I started making high elf lists. <sighs> and, uh, that's exciting. Starting to get the bug. It's... Starting to get the bug. Oh, aren't they good? <laughs> aren't they good? My my brightness is very. No, bright. it's terrible actually. Uh, it's the worst. Uh, you can fit nothing in a high elf list. No, you can't. You just have to. Oh, you're probably putting a dragon in, right? I, I did. Yeah. yeah, that's that's <laughs> why. <laughs> <laughs> I actually didn't. I put a griffin in. And you still couldn't put anything in. Really? I haven't, I haven't dabbled with any. I just dabbled with what I have so far, so no dragons. I'm a griffin guy. I always have been. So yeah, you're I tried playing griffin the griffin and a um, uh, dragon mage. Now that, you get nothing. You get that, nothing. Do you even get core? <laughs> <laughs> I got to raise your volume here a little bit so I can hear you. Uh, yeah, raise me up so you can hear me. That's, that's good. There you go. All right, you're not getting any feedback or anything like that, are you? No, you've been clear for the past minute and 28 seconds I've been recording. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Episode 90, Neil. Woo! There we go. Nice. We made it. We made it. That, you know, like they said, the first hurdle is, is 10 episodes. The second hurdle is 90 for some reason, you know? There you go. Yeah. We're getting oh. there. It's close. Triple yeah. digits are coming. We're going to hit it. And maybe by then, Alex will uh, stop blowing me off and... You know, I actually want to do his part of the podcast that we're trying to figure out here. So Alex calling you out, even though I didn't message him, he's busy. He's traveling. He's visiting folks. So no, like, no, no excuses. He yeah. has to uh, record like eight of them in a row. <clears throat> well, actually, it would be more topical, like what's going on in the fitness industry type stuff and like just things to share. So it would be a little topical, just like we'll be topical tonight. Yeah. And I promise everybody we are going to be talking about the old world packs event packs yeah. we we don't have one that we've written because we haven't had a need but we're both tos uh i'm technically a professional to uh, not yeah. <laughs> i have i'm an assistant professional i assisted you at uh, nova one year i was not paid at nova i don't know if i can be considered a professional okay okay so i am a assistant amateur large yes. event. Okay. there you go there you go <laughs> I mean, I use the term professional very loosely. It's it's fine. Um, but anyway, yes, Neil, let's talk fitness. Let's talk about that usual thing, the thing that Alex is blowing us off for. What have you been doing fitness lately? I've, I've, I've had no pressure to do anything fitness lately because uh, Alex is supposed to be taking over that part of the podcast. And I found that without any pressure, I have not been doing anything. So. Uh, well, there's the, the the pressure of imminent death that you need to stave off by staying is, as healthy as possible. That's, that's your pressure, all right. That's Oddly what you. enough, I just yeah yeah. That's not enough of a motivation for me. <laughs> you know, being worth more dead than alive uh, kind of contributes to that. So, oh, that's America. <laughs> Thanks, America. <laughs> I love you in a lot of ways. I don't love you in healthcare. <laughs> yeah, you're really bad. Um, anyway, that that aside, uh, I'm. Still going to the gym. I'm feeling strong as ever. The fact that I can go in and I'm repping over 225, like every time. Like I'm like I want to. I'm gonna bench today. And it's like okay, 235 for a couple. Feels really yeah. good. Like I'm feeling really strong right now. Like, and I'm not like pushing it. Like I, I haven't deadlifted in a while. So last Friday, I, I or no, actually Monday, I did deadlifts, and I was like, okay, well. Uh, let's let's go 315 335 let's not even like push towards 500 and i was like 365 and i was feeling good i'm like okay like i mentally had to be like stop i know i feel good let's not risk an injury that i don't need to have right now so yeah 
But hey, well, I, I will say you almost got me with that April Fool's. Uh, uh, I don't know thing you posted out on the socials. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> I was it, like, wait, what? Oh, <laughs> yeah. The, the the first part, I was like, hmm, and then the second part, it's like, okay, you got it, got it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For uh, the people uh, out there, um, th- there's there's been some new uh, some new listeners, some new uh, watchers. I guess yes, welcome, YouTube. welcome. Uh, some new subscribers. Um, Chuck likes working out warhammer and taylor swift yes not necessarily in that order okay so you will hear about all of those things gratuitously on this podcast yes actually uh just because we haven't had it in a while uh since there was a comment where someone was like hmm taylor swift and didn't seem to the couple did they didn't seem to enjoy taylor swift well boom here you go here's taylor swift at the concert i took that picture guess what you're <laughs> <de> kidding <laughs> <laughs> so fair warning people yes. uh this this is what it is so i yes uh my, our chan- our channel will grow as it grows because we are just going to be us in all of our yes. glory and all of our shame uh and if you like that great we love to have you if you don't like it hey you know what like and subscribe and then just leave because we need numbers <laughs> okay you be about, be on your merry way it's fine to, yeah. to each their own um but yeah but neil Okay, I'm feeling strong in the gym. It's going good. Uh, tomorrow's leg day. Uh, decided to put it on Friday this week because I didn't feel like having to walk when I'm going to be hanging out with friends this weekend. But hey, you know, that's it is. It's what it is. But let's talk hobby. Okay. All right, hobby time. What hobby have you getting on? Well, you saw some of that hobby when I didn't really think I was being recorded. Um, but uh, Heck yeah. Yeah, there's, a little bit of... <laughs> so, there's been some printing there. A uh, warm day happened, so some printing happened. And then uh, I painted 12 night goblins. So um, this is all to, uh, in addition, I guess, not just addition. I I guess it is addition Mm -hmm. um, to the list that I brought to the barn, uh, modifications to that list. Um, So we're adding some black orcs. We're adding a few more night goblins. If you're new new and wondering what the barn is and and what we just did, look at the last episode and you'll get all the context you need. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. so that's pretty much been it, though. Uh, I do want to start. I need a few more black orcs, and I tend to, I don't know why, but I feel like I've been waiting to paint them until I get them all done so I can spray them all together. That's fine. But I don't yeah. know why I do that. doesn't make any sense. Uh, it has been raining for like a solid three weeks. Oh, so. boy, has it. That's We'll get into that <laughs> in my hobby section. Um, Neil, you yeah. also had a, 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 cam- a map campaign fail dramatically uh, recently, too. That's hobby. Uh, it, 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 <laughs> it, did, it did fail in its grandeur. Yes. Um, however, I think what we're going to try and do is the, the loyalists, I think, are going to try and decrease the map size, kind of reshuffle it a little bit, and then uh, we're going to continue with it. So the ones that are are sticking with it so there you go uh, we're yeah. gonna try so it may it may only uh it may have dropped down to i think we started with 12 we'll be down to geez probably about six or so well yeah. the the whole that whole campaign that you put together with the path of glory is just phenomenal um i'll try and dig out the link again to put it back out for people uh it is yeah. one of the earlier episodes you'll see hex map campaign but yeah it's fun. i think too uh, when aos 4 comes out they didn't mention path to glory for aos 4 so um, I, you know, it, it may port out okay over into the new sure, edition. Yeah, we'll good. see. We'll make some modifications if need be. The other thing I'm going to do is um, just to make this a little bit more free flowing than what I have been doing. Mm-hmm. Like if people want to play a old world game instead of an AOS game or an AOS game instead of an old world game, they can do whatever they want if they're trying to take a territory. Play whatever you want. Sure. Yeah. Kind of thing. That so works. We're going to go a little bit more loose here. I mean, heck, even if you get to the six months with Age of Sigmar and you're just like, you know what, everyone just wants to play old world with it. Just start a fresh campaign and figure out some simple rules. Don't go over the top, but like a six months for right, this campaign right, right, is right, still right. phenomenal. Like that's yeah. six months getting yeah. over 25 people playing. This is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we only lasted three, three months over here. I've been racking my brain trying to figure out, you know, how can we get like a club environment? It's, it's hard because yeah. um, all my guys uh, who I'm really close with that we end up playing a lot with, they're kind of scattered across Northeast Ohio. So some are south, some are more towards Canton, some are up in Cleveland. For those of you who don't know, that's about an hour difference, uh, maybe even a little bit more, depending on what side of Canton you're on. It could be an hour and a half mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. distance, right? So uh, finding a spot that would be central to all of us, but also finding a spot that'll be more like ours. You know, I'd love to make a club that's like 
like a real honest club, not just a bunch of guys who are just saying, Hey, let's play some games. Cause we can do that anywhere. Right. But uh, well, just to get some more commitment. Yeah. But it's a, uh, it's a tough thing to figure out. I'll say that. So it, it, it sure is. I mean, and you have Ren four as your club, but that's kind of an open club, um, mm-hmm. which is like, like my club, Ligonier Legion Wargaming. That's, that's the open club in the area. And I just currently run it. It'll, it'll well surpass me uh, in time, which is great. Um, but that's open for everybody. It's very loose on, there could be club days where there's 20 people, club days where there's two people. That's just the nature of the beast. But if you create something that's a little bit more private with just people that you're going to invite in that, you know, are going to be committed, that's when you can really get something special going for like map campaigns such as this. So, yeah. So the problem is find venue that's close to everybody that's accessible, a time that's accessible to everybody. Um, yeah, it's just, you know, the, our, our map campaign over here went the way of most map campaigns. Or not just map campaigns, just gonna be campaigns in general. Yeah. Uh, you're dealing with adults with lives. And it gets hairy. So, yeah. Uh, picking up it's, a pickup game every once in a while is, is, see, is easy. Doing something that somebody's got to commit to, you know, month after month. See, after I, month I, is, you know, I don't always agree with that. Now, there's always times where people do, like, things happen that are outside control. Um, yeah. But as adults, we have more control over our lives than we did as kids we don't have as much free time but if it's something you care about i feel you're usually pretty good to make that time but you there has to be consistency of when the time's happening so it can be prepared for and that's uh, that's that's part of my fault is not making a consistent day trying to please everybody and by by so doing please nobody (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah you just gotta let people just deal with it like Mm -hmm. just just book book it be like here we're playing it now i can't that sucks so yeah (laughs) move on with your day um Mm -hmm. Okay, well that's that's good yeah. though. Well, that sounds like some good hobby. I'm glad the campaign's still carrying on, uh, and that those maps will be used well into the future for sure. Uh, yeah. Over here for our campaign, it's like yeah, we're we're bleeding in a couple weeks. Um, should be good uh, to continue on. We'll see. Age of Sigma 4.0 is going to be the biggest wrench and hurdle we have to figure out. Yeah. But uh, outside of that, let me bring up my hobby. Miscellaneous window. There we go. So, I had the uh, Arthusa's Crone Host box on my table. It arrived in. I uh, also read the book, so I painted up Carthusa herself to go with my army. Here she is on screen. Uh, super excited. I did get one game in with her in her army at uh, local club day uh, recently with the, the Ligonier Legion crew. Uh, boy, do I like her playstyle of an army. Boy, is it not good for winning competitive Age of Sigmar games. Thankfully, I was playing good friend Rich. He has corn, and he's just like, let's just know battle tactics. Here's two objectives. Pick a grand strat. Let's go. Yeah. Just fun. And we actually ended up drawing on points. I was like, okay, that's not a bad outing for the first time. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, she is everything I like in the army, <laughs> except for mm-hmm. I wish I could bring in Canari. Um, but that's. I guess I could, but like that's I don't want to ally. It's weird, but anyway. Well, in four um, months time, it's going to be different anyway, you know. Exactly. So, so I'm just going to ride or die with Carthus's Crone Host to the end with maybe one more game of Kraith because we'll get into it. Some factions are going away, so who knows what that's going to be. But also mm-hmm. on my hobby table, uh, whoops, painted up the five Doomfire Warlocks that came with it, bringing my total to twenty, uh, which feels plenty. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, I did beyond yeah. you have as many doomfire warlocks as i have Korgoraths, which is too many <laughs> um well, actually i do have more i have more doomfires than i am dark elf army so i, I have seven Korgoraths. oh boy <laughs> that's the reason I have that. <laughs> well hey five of those um doomfires on that that pile are, were yours that aren't fully repainted i just did a minimal repaint on them so oh, yeah. Nice, nice. Well, that's because they were painted beautifully. They actually were there. I really like the purple and gold you used. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to leave that. And horses were already black. So I just kind of did the little cloth on the doom fires and changed their hair. And I was like, I'm done. There you go. Yeah, that white hair that I was, that was not good. <clears throat> and then, not then also there was 10 Sisters of Slaughter slash Witch Elves in the box. I made them Sisters of Slaughter um, because I didn't need it. I have 20 Sisters, you know. I have 60 Sisters of Slaughter in my Daughter's Cane army, and I have currently 120, no, 170 Witch Elves. Because I've taken Witch Elves, I've moved them to Dark Elves, I gave some to my buddy Quentin, because he was playing at 
like you know he's a really good friend and he was getting into dark dark elves i'm like here's a shit ton of witch elves but i only had 10 sisters of slaughter in my dark elf army so put them on the squares based on paying them the match that's where they belong now so that feels good to have that there Mm -hmm. now did you give him the uh, metal ones or the plastic ones uh metal ones yeah yeah i mean i had Oh, like 240 of the metal ones. I still have actually half of the metal ones in my uh, army still are metal. The other half are plastic. Um, I thought about eventually just adding more plastic to it. Um, but also it's like, I don't know what to do with the rest of those witch elves. Cause like I have 50 or 60 currently in my dark elf army. He has probably 30 or 40 that I gave him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> they're just sitting there. They're fine. They're not going, they're not hurting anything. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, no, that was uh, that was hobby. Uh, uh, I did. I mean, I got some games in uh, Old World, Age of Sigmar, having a good time with that in general. Um, the uh, other hobby I did. Oh, it's right behind me. I should have grabbed the one I painted. But this is easier to see. I'm starting to paint my Tomb Kings that I had. I had them washed. Um, I got this. The spearmen are up first, but this guy was bigger and easier to grab, so I grabbed him. Even though I've done no work on him, <laughs> he will be last. I mean, you've done no work, and it's somehow yet it's seventy uh, percent done. Well, it's, it's primed and washed bone. Like, what do you want? <laughs> uh, doing that. Um, also, if you remember from long ago, I I had a Napoleonic army I was going to do, right? Uh huh. So I was tired of it being like just the rule set and random boxes and models in a bag because it's like old Perry miniatures and that sort of stuff. It was just in, in bags and boxes. It was just like, it was a nuisance. It was always in the way. I was always moving it. I'm like, went on Amazon, bought a nice Felder case, uh, which, because they're, they're, they're cheap, they're easy, they're nice. And I it was like a case that I could put the entire army in. So this army is still not put together or primed or anything, but I got the case. I took all the models out one by one and put like a base and the model inside one of the little slots because it was all for character slots. So I have that project mm -hmm. sitting in a foam case up here over here see it um for whenever i get to that point when i want to do a pulling on army um shouldn't be too hard but i have no motivation to do it right now yeah well, so that might be the long like, backlog that i keep for a while well all this hobby that you're showing us right now uh half of it was done while you were uh waiting waist deep in water no not wasted <laughs> oh yeah you're right you're right um they're not wasted so i live in a, as you can tell i live in a more older house in western Pennsylvania. Um, and as those houses do, when it rains excessively, you'll get water in the basement. Now, thankfully, mine doesn't flood as in, like, I will not ever get more than just, like, the barest puddle. But, like, what the problem is, it comes in the front where the seam's at and uh -huh. the drain's in the back. So it's all going that way. <laughs> Which yeah. means in my hobby space, I'm just standing in water. <laughs> so, yeah, I painted those <laughs> models while... Like it was like I have fans running and like pushing water towards the drain and all this stuff. Like, so if you're not painting your models, you don't have an excuse in my mind. I, I have no remorse for you. <laughs> like, I don't have a perfect setup. You just do it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Heck, you want to see something nightmarish? Look at this brush. Can you see this brush? Oof. Can you see? Oh my god. Hold on. Can you see? Let's, I, you, I, yeah, yeah, I see this brush. Look at that brush. It's that's nasty. Well, I guess I can see some kind of point on it. Yeah, there is. It's a curve point. Yeah. <laughs> this brush has painted the past five armies. <laughs> um, and also all the, the GW stuff I did recently. This brush is a <laughs> fucking hero. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I do that. I mean, they, I've used a few other brushes, but like this is like the primary brush. Um, and yeah, but whatever. Yeah. I, I won't I won't buy good brushes because I don't take care of them. <laughs> yeah, 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 no reason. Yeah, I tried getting out the uh, the brush soap and all that kind of stuff. I use that for a little while. I don't know, like the way I paint and like it always. I always wind up getting paint too close to the the rim, mm -hmm. you know. And then once you do that, you're screwed, you know. And it's no, you're not. You just have this little little cheapy brush, and you can see how much paint is actually on like the fur there. Because yeah, 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 I go deep sometimes. <laughs> I that doesn't. Yeah, listen. I mean, yes, yes and no. I mean, I'll still use it. Don't get me wrong, but oh, yeah. uh, it'll be a struggle. <laughs> you get used to the struggle. 
Yes. I actually get so used to it that when I get new brushes, I'm like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> what? I can dot eyes? <laughs> uh, actually, I do I do have... Um, it was gifted um, Byron uh, of Artist Opus. Uh, the last time I was at Adepticon, I did... Uh, I, I helped... I helped T.O. and Judge and all that fun stuff. He was there, and he gifted all the judges for Age of Sigmar, because he played in it, an Artist Opus brush. So I got a detail brush. I use that one for my eyes, and I do take care of that one. But it's only used for one color, <laughs> and never yeah, metals. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I digress. Yeah, um, yeah outside of that, uh, work on Tomb Kings. The next army up after that, eventually we'll... I might go back and do some highlights on my high elves, but I got Bretonians. I'm not worried about rushing through it. I'm just having fun painting right now. Um, I do have to my left a moderate sized GW project that I need to build and prime. So that's that's more in, imminent. That needs to be done by the end of the month. We will see. We will see. Um, yeah, I think that's all. That's all hobby. That's all my hobby. All right. It's been a good time. It's been a good Topic time. time then, huh? Well, I, you know what? Yes, we're going to do the topic first, and then we're going to do the news. We're going to talk about the Old World packs, and our views and critiques and thoughts on those types of packs. And then after that, we're going to talk Age of Sigmar news. Because mm -hmm. new AOS is coming out, things are happening, uh, we all have thoughts, some good, some bad, is what it is. Mm -hmm. We don't know the whole picture, but, mm -hmm. you know, like, you, you're still allowed to have thoughts and opinions on what you've seen so far. You just have to be subject, mm -hmm. know that it's subject to change. Sure. But first... Let's start with, we're going to start with uh, the browser window here. Actually, no, we'll start with the PDF. So, first pack I'm going to bring up here for us to view. Oh, I'm sorry, you guys might not be able to read this too well. I'm going to try my best. Hmm, I thought I had this positioned well, everybody. I apologize. We will get it here in one second. Talk amongst yourselves. Yep, yep, we'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's that's let's, one more. Ah, okay, that's that's probably the best I can do, everybody. So, um, hang in there. Uh, these are all posted online, so you can check them out as well. Uh, so the Adepticon pack. That's the one we're gonna start with first. Um, so Neil, you actually, and I, what's up? I actually haven't looked at the Adepticon one, so I'm curious as to hear what's going on there. Well, I should have sent it to you. Um, <laughs> we'll we'll figure it out. Um, I say the reason we're looking at packs is because there's a lot of old world events happening now. There's a lot of mm -hmm. thoughts on comp, on things to change. There's still things that need to be FAQ'd, and some people are just like, nah, not, let's let's just play it as it is. And other people want to like really restrict it. So I'm just gonna yeah. check out, see what's out there. Um, I said, and give our thoughts on it. So the Adepticon. This is the uh, Battle for the Badlands. Our, our friend Ben. Uh, put this on mm -hmm. as the TO. And let's take a look at his pack here. So, list composition, which is really where all the biggest things are going to be at. So we scroll up here. Mm -hmm. um, okay, yeah, there, there's the event schedule, event summary, 150 minute games with breaks between rounds. Okay, sure, that seems reasonable. Um, mm -hmm. Asking for tabletop standard, blah, blah, blah. Uh, scoring. This actually, let's, we'll start with scoring. That's kind of important. So he's mm -hmm. doing uh, battle points, 60 point max. So 20 for a major win, 15 for a victory, 10 points for a draw, 5 points for a loss, and 0 for a withdrawal. Hmm. Um, and Interesting. That's, yeah, and I think he's using it. So if you uh, stop game early, is that a withdrawal then? I, assume. I, I suppose so, yeah. Unless, hmm. unless it's maybe clear that you've already lost, potentially. Mm -hmm. Um, but if you want to get some points, you better stay and hang on there for something. Um, yeah, yeah. Because you still get five points for a loss. Mm -hmm. um, yes, and I think it's in the, the core rules where it dictates what a major win versus a victory is and, like, mm -hmm. what a draw is. It's, like, well within, like, what, 100, 150 to 200 points, something of that sort, I think, between each of those. So if, like, you're... Mm -hmm. It'd be outside that to score them. Um, paint, 25 points max, scored against the paint rubric. Um... Yeah, that's what it, what it is. Freehand, display board, conversions, weathering decal, but basically level painting techniques. The usual stuff you see. Mm -hmm. And of course, sportsmanship. Now, each player can score up to 10 points per game with their opponents because this was a three-game event. Um, that was it. 
It is what it is. Give, give your so opponent zero ten. ten. Points zero points, right? Well, that's <laughs> because it's in the Midwest, and that's what they do at Adepticon, it seems. Yes. All right. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, might as well have one. It might as well be binary, one or zero. <laughs> it, it, Whatever. It might, <laughs> yeah. All right. Anyway, so army composition. All right. Armies are comprised of two thousand points under the following restrictions. When building your army. Use the most up-to-date old world rules found in core rules. Okay, so he's kind of future-proofing this. I like that. Um, obviously, Ravening Hordes, Forces Fantasy, Arcane Journals, Legacy PDFs, FAQ Arenas, etc. Check the community site, blah, 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 blah. Putting, you know, you need to know your rules before you come in. Of course, they will be checked. Please understand how to play this game. It's a tournament. Mm -hmm. See, Legacy PDFs and Arcane Journals are allowed at the event. However, Allied Contingents or Mercenaries will not be used at the event. And that's Which, fair. Yeah, no, that's fair. That's a that's a nice little soft comp. Um, I think the only real mercenaries we've seen now are part of the orcs and goblins. Right. That's so, the only thing I'd say. But that that came out post Adepticon. That, yeah, that was post Adepticon. But like I said, he's writing this to future proof it. I think in his own way. Yeah. Um, the allied thing though, yeah, uh, I don't hate it. I, I personally never bring allies unless I'm telling a narrative yeah. story and a reason I, I why. I hate allies. I hate allies in Age of Sigmar. I hate them everywhere. I hate them. I, I don't care where. I hate it. I, I, hate, I, hate, I, hate. I enjoy them in two circumstances. One, narrative fun. There's a reason, yes. and that means you're kit bashing and you're making it fit the army and all that fun stuff. Two, Cities of Sigmar. <laughs> Break to Sigmar. Ugh. Because I play, I play Sylvaneth, or I play, no Sylvaneth, I play uh, Living Cities, so I have one Sylvaneth ally. That's it. I don't like it. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> it is annoying that I have to print out the rule and then from Wahapedia and then put it in my book. That is annoying for sure, but that is what it is. Yeah. yeah. All right. Limitations. All right. Zero to three apply to any unit that is not otherwise restricted by a player's army composition. So a max of three of anything ever. Yeah. For example, Empire Man. Okay. And it's just it's just going into an example. Um because yeah. some armies a little have bit later. I'd like to kind of touch on you know that that rule of three and just what I've seen so far in some of my games and everything, but we can move on. No, no, actually, that this is a very that's another one of those levers. This is a little bit harder lever than saying no ally contingents. Um, like I said, like to be honest too, even if we looked at people could say legacy armies being allowed or not allowed, or arcane journals being allowed or not allowed, or named characters being allowed or not allowed. That's all different levers you can pull in an event pack. So let's talk about the three rules. Tell me, what are you seeing out there, Neil? From what my opinion on it is, I like I like the rule, right. um, and especially for a large event, I think the rule and having it in a pack is necessary. Um, I think at a smaller event, depending on what your local meta is like and who like who's at the local meta. In all the games I've played, we've not had a rule of three, but I've never actually seen the rule of three broken by anybody I've played, even though they didn't have the restriction. So even when I played Brad, and I think he had only had three units of... He, he either had yeah. three or four units of, of the uh, Dragon Ogres. I'm pretty sure it was only three. So um, Yeah, because the other one was... Pretty, a, he had a Shagath in there, so yeah, it was only three. Yeah, so, you know, it was... Uh, I, I mean, so far, I've seen some pretty fair lists out there. Now, could you go nuts and do, like, a base unit of five night goblins and, and throw the fanatics like in there all the all the cheap heroes to get as many See, of them as you can and three fanatics in there yeah i think that's why the rule of three needs to be there right it's just because there's it's gonna be in a large cases. event somebody will do it yeah it's these period. weird edge cases where it's people that really like like buddy are you okay is everything okay at home like is you know right. what's, what's going on like why would you yeah. want to do this to people yeah, that's what these and, are kind of here it's, for. It's there, it's it's you know again the like uh, we we've talked about this and rehashed this to to the end and back. But you know when you're at a big event like that, people are going to try to win the big event. They're going to try and do a, win the big event within the rules, however they can. Um, so when when you see stuff like that, you have to take that kind of into consideration. I think the rule of three does a really good job at limiting that and making it you know somewhat feasible. Right, and so. there's you have to look at it too, like me and you as tos like yeah i'm i'm probably never going to bring more than three of something yeah ever like that seems a lot especially like the armies i play but yeah just because i'm that way doesn't mean everybody's that way and and if you're playing in the you know like i said level the event like adepticon is a national level event and needs to act like a national level event and needs to be prepared so yeah. i think having a, a limit of three is a fine comp within this i think that should be maybe like a core rule thing but it seems to be 
people are taking this on as the bigger events more so than not. Mm -hmm. This seems to be the most obvious. Yeah, let's just do this. Let's just do this. And and you know, you do that enough, eventually it it becomes they it just add it. Thing. Yeah, they just yeah. put it in the rules. Um, yeah. Just like like the other thing too, like where legacy PDFs, everybody's allowing them. Yeah. It's just that's that's, that's that yeah, like they're like yeah. okay, so we're just going to ignore that's... you telling us no and we'll just keep using it. So eventually uh -huh. you'll probably see a change in that. Because yeah. to be fair, I mean, this was written by a team that was play tested. You can't check everything. There's always something that gets through and Maybe this is one of the things they're just like, you know what? We didn't think it was a problem, but there's like those people out there, so we'll update it later. Yep. Um, yeah, but no. And then the rest of it just goes on to about having a, a list your opponents can read and blah, 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 blah. Uh, yeah. And then the awards. So mm -hmm. that's the Adepticon singles pack. I like it. It's very simple. It's actually very in line with how I would write a pack in a lot of mm -hmm. ways. Very yeah, light. Yeah, it sounds great to me. It didn't sound like there's. There's a lot of overt comp that's just, you know, like a, like by T.O.'s whim, you yes. know, kind of deal. Oh, we'll, you know? get to, we'll get to the Nova primer. Don't you worry. We're, it's in here. <laughs> They're not getting away with that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I, but anyway, yeah. Uh, the Epticon, that kind of fits my mentality. Um, I would I'm, I would maybe play a little bit more with... Uh, within the arcane journal itself maybe like not allow name characters uh i could i could i could see myself maybe putting that in even though it kind of kills some of the arcane journal doesn't kill it completely uh it just depends because Cetra like Cetra's pretty good green knight's pretty good <laughs> you know like and if you're not it, it depends on the type of event you want to have i guess like if you're going to be a semi-casual like tournament you might want to limit those if it's like tough as nails then yeah of course allow them in but Anyway, yeah. let's move on to the next I've always question. been, uh, in Warhammer Fantasy in general, I've always been pro special characters, but I can see it. I mean, it wouldn't keep me from going to an event because you said no, no. special characters. Right, right. So. It's That's that's about, that's as, pretty much as up to the line as I will get. Um, mm -hmm. But we play with them all the time here locally. It's just, it's just a thought. It's a, you know, yeah. I, I would consider it. I don't know if I would do it. It would actually change my list knowing that the green knight would not be there oh sure yes yeah 100 <laughs> yeah um all right so the next pack the adepticon team tournament or devil's tournament uh if you prefer um this was kind of fun uh brendan melnick was the to for this and uh it was kind of fun he, he asked for my input here and there he's obviously the to was making all these fun decisions but like you know i was throwing out thoughts or what ifs and he's like what does this look like so i had a little bit of a small hand in this but um i would say maybe like five percent to ten percent at most this was this is mostly his his genius um but still it was fun that uh he asked because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it's also you know a t a double event there's a lot more shenanigans gonna happen uh like two footed gorks you know <laughs> which shouldn't happen anyway oh well you know what I love that it happened, and I love that it's uh, it's a thing that haunts your dreams. <laughs> yeah. Even though it killed you guys more, I know. It still does. All right. Anyway, so Adepticon Old Worlds double. One day, three-round event. Uh, I do like this. Brandon's always good at putting a mission statement in. The aim of this event is to provide the opportunity to play the Old World with you and your friend. The goals events provide a relaxed and fun event for folks who may not have a full Old World army yet for experience, generals, and field, blah, 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 blah. And he set the points limit. And I remember talking briefly about this because, like, you, you know, even I was like, when I was thinking of stuff too, like, he set he set the points limit at 1250, which is just perfect. There's two new boxes you can go buy, is 1250 points. Okay. Okay. That's why it's 1250. So both players have 1250? Both players have 1250. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if, if you and your buddy want to do it, one of you go buy the Tomb Kings, one of you go buy the Bretonians, you build it, you paint it as best as you can, boom, you have an army ready to go. There you go. Details for choosing your army, obviously army list restriction. Same thing here. Um, Ravening Hordes, Forces of Fantasy, Arcane Journal, Legacy, blah, 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 blah. Um, he does call out here, which I assume this is what the, the GT played on, but wasn't called out. They're playing on a 6x4 table, um, which makes mm -hmm. sense for this game, especially yeah. with a doubles event. Mm -hmm. uh, missions will be announced the day of the event. That's, that's, that's Brennan's choice. That's the other thing, too. It's always fun, is you can always choose to put the missions out early or later to dictate 
how people might build lists. So that's always fun. He likes to. I'm gonna I'm a let the let the the missions out kind of guy. Let him out there. Let him let him let him fly free. Let him. Well, see, let I, him I, marinate. I get both because if you if you see the missions and those missions accidentally skew to one way, you will build your list in that way. As opposed sure, to, if sure. you don't know, you might build a more conservative all-around approach. I tend to put my missions out too, um, but both are fine strategies. Bre Brennan's very much a day of event type of person, so uh -huh. it's fine. Uh, yep. Once again, terrain will be used starting on page 272. Uh, terrain, terrain will be used, but special features starting on page 272 will not be used. A nice little bit of, of uh, comp there. So we're using terrain, but we're not using the special rules. We're not going too deep yet. He wants to relax. This is kind of an intro tournament. So we don't know, yeah. need to go crazy. But hey, woods are woods, hills are hills. That's about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, here's the important part for a doubles pack. The following restrictions slash changes will apply to this event beyond those listed in your army. Both armies of each team are considered to be trusted allies, regardless of the two armies selected by players. That makes sense, sure. because you would be very limiting on how you would choose armies if you had to actually follow that plan. Yeah. I will say, if you wanted a more narrative style event, that would actually be lead to very interesting interactions on the table, but oh, for this sure. is not that. So. Sure. Uh, both players may play the same kind of army list. A maximum of three of the same unit selected across both member of the team. Nice. Yeah. So, like, if no, you, so, like, no, if no you, six units of uh, night night goblins with. Uh, well, it's it. What what's nice here is it's not just per person; it's per team. So, if yeah, you yeah. if me and you That's were going, I mean. took both took high elves. We could have max three units of like archers, between us. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. Uh, this next one I like. We we, <laughs> I remember we talked about this one a little bit back and forth. Um, a maximum of six wizard levels may be present among the combined wizard levels of the team. I love that. So three twos, six ones, yeah. one four, one two, two threes. That... Is, this a, uh, is this a good spot to kind of uh, where, where I can maybe talk about wizard levels? Please, go right ahead. All right. So um, the thing that I've seen in my game, I think we touched on this a little last week, is that there is just, um, for me right now in this game, there is no reason. And if somebody has one, please comment uh, below and, and, and tell me why I'm wrong. But um, I find no reason to ever not run a level four wizard. Possibly multiple level four wizards if you can fit them. Yeah. Uh, uh, in every game I played, if uh, if there was a level two or something like that, and I had a level four out and he was in dispel range, um, that that puppy was getting dispelled every time, um, almost without fail. I'd say probably eighty percent of the time for me, maybe eight, maybe higher than that. Um, so um, now, if you read the book, and me being kind of you know this. Uh, this fluffy narrative guy that I am, you know, talks about the wizard levels and how rare they are in the world. Right. right. Yeah. So a level one is your like normal hedge wizard, you know, which are rare to begin know. with. Yeah. You know, yeah. You know, putzing around, you know, he's, he's the, the village weirdo. Right. <laughs> um, and uh, so level two wizard is somebody who actually has a little bit of control over, you know, you know, sort of uh, starting to master the, uh, the, the stuff. So, um, level three wizards are now where like like your lord level you're like king level wizards right and right. your level fours are supposed to be like the rarest thing in the entire you know we're talking like it's, one guy in the entire you know maybe and two what honestly you know? if we're looking at the arcane journals that have given us like uh like Bretonia and the orcs and goblins have given us named characters who are mm -hmm. wizards they're level three right yeah your level fours are like Teclas, right? That's yeah. what I would assume. I'd assume Teclas is your level four, right? But everywhere you look, like I got a, I got a goblin shaman that's level four. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, it's, they're so everywhere. It's like pimply -faced goblin shaman that's level four. You know, and he's going to be in every list right now. Um, so um, I love this particular way that he solved this, saying that there's a max amount of levels through the teams. Now, how that could be brought to single player. That's different, right? right? Sure, yeah. Uh, that's not going to really work for single player. Like, if you're uh -huh. like, there's a max four. Well, okay, I'll have I'll my level one level four, four and I'm good. Yeah, <laughs> there it is. So, um, unless you go lower than that, right? Which you could do, but now you're starting to approach some pretty heavy comp there. Yeah, and, that's very. It's know, getting very heavy comp. Okay. And I think that there's a place 
for comping wizard levels um, heavier in more narrative style events. You know. So, oh sure, yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, you, you, so, had a, like, you had a concept on around that, yeah. But explain that concept you had because I can't. Recall. Yeah, so I had a, I had thought like I was trying to come up with a way like how do you how do you incentivize taking you know um, lower level wizards right and maybe decentivize but also but also make it a little bit more realistic to how rare they are um, in the world. So I didn't want to make it so that you couldn't take a level four. But uh, one of the ways I came out now again, this was not would not be something I would do for a competitive game, right? But if I wanted to kind of comp it a little bit for like a narrative type scenario where I want to see something coming out a little different. So what I did was for level four wizards, like let's let's say you took a level four wizard um, and it was it wound up being 300 points. Yep. Okay. okay. So that 300 points would take out, and let's say you're playing 2,000 points, and so you have a max 500 points in rare. So now you subtract the amount of points your wizard is worth out of the rare, your level four wizard, and out of your special. Actually, think, right. thinking of that, maybe it's more so, don't remove from the special and from the rare. Make it so if you're taking that level four and he costs 300 points, you have to take 300 more points of core. Yeah, that's could, a bad, that, could, I think that might be a better comp because some armies might get yeah. around that whole special rare thing very easily. That's actually that's not a bad idea. Um, the reason why I came up with the rare uh, is because right these guys are supposed They're to be rare. rare. Yeah. So all right, so maybe you have less rare things in your army, but the, doing it based on core is another way to go about it as well. Um, I think. At that point, they're just going to be like, okay, well, I'll put, I'm still putting this level four wizard in every single time. And I'm just going to take more core. Right. You know, yeah. so it, it, um, depends on your it may still be the yeah. case, right? That, you know, with, with the, the kind of options that I came up with, that you're still going to take the level four, but you're going to pay a higher toll for it, you know, and, and it, it'll be reflected in your army list building that you'll just kind of see right. less rare it's, things out there. I said so, the, the only um, real issue comes into play with things like some armies will get around it, like, Okay, let's say I have to take more cores of high elf. Well, my current list, I'm bringing a rare or a special unit as core because of my general. And then if you look at, right. for example, like wood elves popped right to mind. Actually, okay, I mm -hmm. want to take a lot of core because they're my bows. <laughs> I don't care. Yeah. So like the it's yeah. this is just thoughts, everybody. So like just right. These are thoughts. Mind. These are thoughts. And like there this this idea that I've had. The reason why I didn't actually like come up with and, and kind of put this to print or anything is because it has a ton of loopholes, right? Oh yeah. But what I'm saying oh. is. I would I, I love and if you guys have a better idea, please let us know on like, you know, narratively what we can do. I mean, you could always just say, hey, no level fours, you, you know, could. you could um, or you could say like just, or just do the thing where it's like, hey, you know what? You can't have uh, a character cost more than 200 points in that slot. Yeah. Yeah. Because then, you know, let's say you can fit a level four under 200 points, but then uh, they don't have any magic items to speak of. Right. Yeah. That, that dampens it down a little bit. Right. So. Uh, uh, yeah, there's different ways to play with it. Right, and I will say this. I, I've been thinking about how do I get a level 2 that's useful. At least with my High Elves, a level 2 on a horse whose main purpose... Here's the, here's the issue. I want him casting magic missiles and throwing out... Or, or throwing out buffs, like remains in play buffs, or throwing out um, uh, vortexes, vortices. It sounds like everything. <laughs> right, because like what's like, it's what's like he he gets it out, he can stay outside of casting and the spelling range because. Right. And here's something I I I forgot I've been screwing this up. Uh, if say I put a say I put and I do this a lot. Say I put tempest right in front of my one guy. Okay, well, are you within range of my wizard to dispel that tempest? Not in range of the tempest, the, right. the vertice. So I'm like, okay, so I had a level two dancing around. Maybe it, it would be a fun thing to play, and I'll I'll probably play with it. I'll take a while to learn it but you know th th there's there's plays but generally speaking if you're in range and you're not level four you're not casting yeah yeah i think the easiest thing to do is just be like you know what if you want to see less less is you just say hey you know level one level two wizards you know yeah. that's a way you can do it um it's, it's a pretty harsh comp you know but it depends on the event you're trying yeah. to have here all right right but anyway yeah it's enough on wizards for now there's mm -hmm. more basic rules that brendan had here no one unit may exceed 300 points. Now, this is a throwback to old 8th edition style comp. Uh, the event, when I went to Squarebase GT uh, last November up in uh, Welland, Ontario, at the Mini Wargaming uh, facility, 
there was a comp where no unit could be over X number of points, otherwise it cost more towards your comp score. Which is how in it that now that's I don't want to get into that yet. I don't think we need to have a comp adjustment on your actual final placing, but it's not a bad thing to have. Keeping your points down, not making a super death star list. Uh mm -hmm. and that would now a unit that would also probably include uh, I imagine um that might include the unit uh, the heroes you put inside of it too. Potentially. I don't know. Maybe not. Probably not. That'd be too much. Never mind. Scratch that. Yeah, so that's probably too much. The more I just thought about it on my list, I'm like, nope, that's terrible. Um, <laughs> but still, uh, okay. Also, a maximum of 150 magic, 150 points of magic items may be selected per player. There is no additional limit on things such as gifts of chaos than those already listed in the army list. So, wow. that's a pretty hefty cop. Magic items are a little bit more expensive than this thing, and that's magic items is going to be weapons. Armor, regen stuff, banners. Yeah, that's that's gonna add up very quickly. So that's that you know maybe that's a nice little pairing with that whole wizard thing to help keep that mm -hmm. down. Yeah, yeah. All right, uh, magic items may not be duplicated on a team except for those that are extremely common. That makes sense. No allies may be used. Seems no one likes allies. We're we're, we're hitting that pretty good. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Name characters are allowed, but may not exceed three hundred points. For a single unit. Um, I forget. I think Cetra might be the only one that's above that right now. Maybe. Maybe the Green Knight. I forget. But that's another comp that's kind of interesting. To, to Green Knight's about. below 300. Is he? Okay. Yeah. Alright, so I think it's probably just Cetra. Maybe. Uh, hold on. I'm getting out my Tony and Arcane Journal. Or Lady Luka. How many points is she? Yeah, I believe the Green Knight was two, like upper two hundreds. Lady Elise Ducar is two twenty five, and the Green Knight. As we flip through it here, if I can find him, where the heck is he? Number one on the on the list there. Surprise. Yep. Oh, yep. There he is two seventy five. You know, just for fun, so. I'm gonna check Cetra too, because maybe this is a, a future proofing thing, as well. You mm -hmm. know, just 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 in case. Yeah, I mean, when you see Teclas come out or Tyrion, if they do come out, um, they'll probably be up there. Yep, the Nekahara guys cheap, so it's Prince Athos is 130. Cetra's 445. So yeah, <laughs> don't don't bring Cetra is what you've been told to do. Um, <laughs> which he is he's he's a monster um mm -hmm. he's good he's he's, a, he's very good but uh outside of that um name characters may not be duplicated on a team that's great that's easy um so yeah that's that's a nice little section of comp there uh the rest of it's just about you know lists and such like that um have your lists uh, dice etiquette, some basic stuff. I mean, this was definitely aimed as if you're maybe new or coming back, kind of remind you of some basic things. Mm. Um, I do like this. This is a nice little bit in the pack here. Com uh, Adepticon can be quite loud, and personal space may be at a premium. It can be overwhelming for those with sensory issues. Recommend that you experience sensory issues you would like to attend. You know, take you know, be great to consider bringing aids for assistance with these sort of things. Um, I never really experienced this, so I started doing the, the U.S. Open, but there was a couple people that had some sensory overload issues. Um, and, like, you know, we we figured it out, but it's one of those things that's like, yeah, more and more, I think it's something that these big events you need to be kind of aware of, um, mm -hmm. just in case it pops up. Like, you know, and the, there's different levels. Uh, usually, if you put them in, like, <laughs> hey, you know what, you're, you're going to game over here, you'll just be in the corner, so you're not surrounded by people. It's a little, hopefully a little quieter. Um seem to be pretty reasonable for most people so and then you know just always check in but don't 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 crowd so uh i just like that uh, and i just want to put that in there because sensory issues like my wife suffers from them and they can be kind of overwhelming <laughs> mm -hmm. um and especially if you're alone and that happens you don't know how to react like you shut down and you can't tell people that yeah. there's an issue other than they can tell um yeah and also there's uh issues with lower mobility people because tables can be quite close uh that's that's also a key thing, uh, just in case someone shows up and, you know, they don't 
they don't realize it and you know maybe they're in a, like a, a wheelchair or some sort of assisted scooter and it's like those are going to be pretty tight at least adepticon tables i've seen so mm -hmm. so we'll say adepticon tables being lower would actually work out pretty well for wheelchair height but sure um, for sure out of that that's, that's probably the only bonus you're getting so. yeah but I, I just have to say i just want to call that out because i just love seeing that in there because that's mm -hmm. something that's really good um and it's very minimal. It's not in, impactful. It's not hard to prep for. And you're, you're, you're helping people be ready for something maybe they, they can expect at least. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, scoring, battle point 60, appearance 25, sporting behavior 12. Brendan likes his sports score. It goes up a little bit. <laughs> so it's 0 to 12? Is he up 0 to 12? Well, yeah, 0 to 12. Um, well, it's probably 4 points per game. There's a three. It's a three-game event. Yeah, there's four okay. things here. And it's very simple. One point for yes. Did your opponent arrive on time? Yes or no. Did your opponent play in a timely manner? Yes or no. Did your opponent play in a transparent manner? Yes or no. And he gives an example of it. And did your opponent resolve any rules disputes in a reasonable manner? Yes or no. So very simple. Uh, took you know he's taking as much subjectivity out of that subjective score, mm -hmm. but there's still some subjectivity. So, but hey, yeah. it is what it is. Yeah. And then the awards and FAQ and all that sort of stuff, and then yeah. the paint rubric. I would prefer, you know, if you're going to have a, a sports score like that, my my preference there is that you don't fill it out till the end of the event for all your games. Yeah. And the reason why I say that is when you have to fill it out in front of your opponent, you are more likely to go one 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 and give them the four, you know, right? Because uh, you're, you're 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 usually rushing to finish up. Yeah, you got your piece of paper out. He's got it. He's right across the table. If he wants to glance up. He knows what you're giving him, right? <laughs> you know, so wait till the end. That way, you can be as, you know, honest with yourself about it. Um, and and even and even let's say, and let's say even if you would have marked somebody pretty badly, because of however your game went, you had night to sleep on it. Well, maybe it wasn't as bad as what it, <laughs> what, what you sure. made it out to I, be. I mean, know? we could do a whole so, show, and I, we've done shows on it about sports scores because like there's different yeah. philosophies here and there. Because like you yeah. know, there could be the like I. Maybe you don't need a sports score because people showing up this should be good, but you can't always trust that. So like maybe everyone starts with a certain score of twenty, yeah, and then they they can lose. Uh, but like you know that's a very negative experience too. So like, yeah. there's so I'm, much we uh, can talk about on this. And like it's yeah, I'm it, the, I'm the four point guy. Like here's your four points. Whether you had a good game, I had a good game or a bad game with you, and uh, move along. Yeah. Uh, well, you know. it's it's. Like, that's an entirely different topic. That's not about yeah. we're working at the comp here and stuff like that. So we'll we'll table sure. that for another issue and maybe we'll get some other folks on, um, like like Brennan for example, and just be like, hey, just let's just let's just talk about it. Like we're not we're not attacking anybody's philosophy. Everybody has their own choice on this. Um, right. But it's fun to see how that works out. But that's its own yeah. entire topic, and we got news sure. to get through. But first, we have two more packs to get through. Right. Um. Next one though gonna be the harsher one this is now this isn't the event pack this is a primer for nova open now neil you and i have both to to nova open uh granted age sigmar side um and here's the thing this pack has already been through the ringer so is the to i don't know if they're changing anything this is still what's up as of the recording of this podcast um so don't go attacking anybody but we are going to critique things um yeah but you know, as the TO, it's their choice to do this, but you as a gamer and the player, it's your choice to go or not based upon that sort of pack. I personally would not go to this event after the things <laughs> that were in there. <laughs> yeah, um, that makes sense. Yeah. But some people might, and they want that, and that's fine. And then, like, you know, mm -hmm. there it is. And all right, so basic things, doors open, doors at, uh, list submissions, all that sort of stuff. Um. So here we go. There's been a lot of talk about list comp and restrictions, so thank you all for comments, feedbacks, and suggestions. Maybe there'll be a tweak or two going forward, but we're starting here. I feel my job as TO is to provide an enjoyable event experience to as many gamers as possible. My goal is to ensure the return next year and spread the word. This includes event lead-up, mission objectives, quizzes, puzzles during games, personality, and yes, even list building. This is at the discretion of the TO, and list comps below are what I see as the way forward for now, smiley face. Okay. <laughs> so I don't want to attack a person. Uh -huh. That sent that paragraph alone means I close this and I don't I don't go. 
<laughs> Especially when you add when you finish on a smiley face. That's not gonna end well. <laughs> Hope to see you playing rank and flank. Cheers. Okay. So army list rules and restrictions. So point level for this event, twenty five hundred points. Okay. I don't I don't hate that because that means I get to bring all my toys. Yeah. Uh, and they're clearly like doing this is the opposite of what Brendan wants. Brendan wanted a relaxed starting point for people maybe who are coming back or new to the to the game. This says you clearly are one of the fans that have tons of armies. I expect you all to have armies already. So boom, twenty five hundred points, which is kind of where we were playing at the end of eighth edition. So can I uh, can I ask? Like I know we haven't got there yet, but what is the game length? Uh, how, how, how much time do they have for these games? We'll. I don't. Uh, Three hours with 15 minutes for setup. So three hours, 15 minutes. Going to be a close cut there, I think. It, I, Especially with how early it is. But I think with how early it is, yes. Um, the experience, because like I, I'm an experienced 8th edition player. Mm -hmm. Old world games still weren't quick. Even if I was quick. Doesn't mean your opponent's quick. Right. Um, and there were still things that popped up going. And like, I would question everything. Like, I, I, I even still, when I'm playing, like, if I'm playing somebody new, I'm like, hey, if I say, oh, this is what the rule is, feel free to 100% and say, like, let's check it anyway. You're not going to hurt my feelings because I may have it wrong. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, yeah it's, and if we look it up, we will know. Um, right. Granted, this is a tournament. You should know your rules, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. That's beside the point. I don't mind that the choice here was expecting a higher level of knowledge. Yeah. It might be early for that, but that doesn't bother me. Uh, for, it's things that bother me in this pack, that's, that does not bother me. Mm -hmm. That's a choice. Um, still, the lever of 2,000 to 2,500 is a very interesting one. Uh, I originally wanted to be like, I want to start playing 2,400 because I wanted to bring everything I wanted to bring. Yeah. But the more I played 2,000 points, I realized that limiting structure of not bringing everything I want to bring is actually a really fun comp without being comp. Right. Because I'm not bringing Phoenix Guard, White Lions, and Sword Masters. No, no. I can pick two of those. And if I want to bring a Dragon... I'm bringing only one of those, most likely. Mm -hmm. You know, or a Griffin or a Phoenix. So it's... Yeah. I'm 2,500, you're going to see you're gonna see multiple dragons. <laughs> yeah. multiple. I, I want to play bigger games eventually, but not as my standard. I, I think it feels like a good standard where I'm at. But hey, you know what? Yeah. 2,500, that's a spectacle. That's great. Awesome. Uh, yeah. Legacy armies, arcane journals are allowed. Boom, love that. Rule of three, characters core and special. Uh, perfect. <laughs> You know, like rule mm -hmm. of three. Um, max of two of the same rare choice. So he's kind of separating it out. You can't bring three rare choices. You're max two. So rule of three for characters, core, and special. Max two okay. for rare choice. Max two characters in a unit. So prevent any potential Death Stars. Um, that feels kind of heavy at this time. I don't... I, I personally have never written a list where I want to have more than one character in a unit anyway. Well, I think you see it more in like Empire Armies. You know, Empire okay, Armies going to have a lot of a lot of heroes in a in a big block. You know. Yeah, but how impactful are they all? Is the question. Like that's that's well, like, what like, you can that? do with that though is if you attack the unit, right? Um, then your fighting rank, the heroes and everything who are in the fighting rank are not being attacked, so okay. um, they stay. They get to hit back. Or sure. or. You are, and or you have to attack the heroes, right? And maybe you're not going to do as much to the heroes as what you're going to do um, to the unit proper. And so they give you a chance to to hit back a little bit more. They 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 do tend to buff. They can also challenge. They can also you know do a lot of different things. So gotcha. I get that, you know. Yeah, it's it's well, I, like I said, the rule of three feels like a nice easy comp thing. It doesn't bother me. When we start getting to the maxing two of rare choices, max two of characters in the unit. I'm like. I mean, personally, the list I have don't have that anyway, but it's like, so it doesn't affect me, but it's just like, starts mm -hmm. me, starts make, making me think like, this feels a little heavier than I'm used to in a comp. Um, which followed up by the next one, uh, max one level three or four. Now, here's the reason, here, here's the thing too. Uh, those three things, max two rare, max two character, max one level three or four. I think the only reason those are there is because the TO decided to play 2,500 points. If you're right. at 2,000 points, I don't think those three those three comp things become an issue. You can just say rule of three, and you're probably okay. But yeah. if you're choosing 2,500 points, it does re probably require that extra step to keep it within bounds of what you're expecting. So that's kind of mm -hmm. a... That's a give and take there. 
All right, max 35% points on characters, 875 points total, which, once again, we're getting very heavy, <laughs> it feels like. Um, yeah. And some people might be like, whoo, that's, that, you know, 35%, that's still quite a bit. And like, mm, I know it's less than the 50, but I just played a 2,000-point game, and I lost because I couldn't kill 900 points of Slaves of Dark or Warriors of Chaos characters. I, got to, I couldn't figure it out. Um but this feels limiting. Yeah, a... It feels limiting at twenty five hundred points to not allow that max. Because like, if you don't want that many dragons, why? Like, it's like, a, like there's a back and forth here where I'm like, I think a lot of this extra comp I'm seeing is only because they were saying we're playing twenty five hundred points. Yeah. That that and that's that's legitimately it. I think if you said two thousand, yeah. a lot of this stuff just goes away. You can see like the onus is like the incentive is for you to bring blocks of troops, right? Yeah. That's what that's what the incentive is there. I mean, I I maxed out my character slots. I just wrote a narrative list for orcs and goblins, and I maxed out my character slots at um, uh, to so two thousand. But it's like, I mean, it's even just a narrative list, right? It's got a it's got a orc gen or a or a goblin general on wolf chariot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not worried about that, <laughs> right? You know, like uh, I don't know, because you can have fun. Like you can have fun. You can do right. more things. But you know, again, like this is that's well, so, narrative. I, so, yeah, I, I, you know? I think I think a lot of like this this that we're seeing with those points is just because of the higher points game. And if it was lower, you couldn't do those things anyway. Like I said, that's not a slam against doing twenty five hundred points. That's just what I'm seeing and reading this pack. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then you know the thing with the, the thing with the wizard levels, right? You know, like again, um, you're gonna take the level four. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Every time. Every time. Right. Yeah. Um, okay, so you, so you limited that. We just talked about limiting that. You know, if you wanted to, you know, for a style term. For me, if we're going to be limiting those kind of things, then that starts to push us more into a little bit more of a narrative territory or just a heavy comp style event, which is what we're what we're seeing here. So, right. so next next point of comp, and this is one that I this debate happened early and often, and then kind of seemed to have faded away. Um, Max 10 models wide for a closed and open formation unit. Yeah. So I I get that because that whole line hammer thing that was going around, I, I it just honestly it feel like it feels like it just kind of went away because everyone says, yeah, it's done, we won't do that. And if someone does that, we'll just shun them. <laughs> like I, to, to be honest, that's how I feel that happened. That's that's where that's at. How are you gonna get your game done when you're pulling all those models and lining them all up? Well, and don't you're, forget, you're lining them back. The, and then you're like, I don't know how you get your game done. See, Other no, than unless your opponent flips the table. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, here's the thing. The Bone Grinder Giant in the Orcs and Goblins Arcane Journal has a very nice rule at the start of combat. I think it's at the start of combat. I'll, w when we do a review on that, we'll, we'll look into it. Um, every unit in the fighting rank takes an initiative test or is slain because he eats you. If you have 20 wide dwarfs, uh. <laughs> guess what? I'm killing 17 of them, most likely. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, you know, you, you're probably uh, you're probably going to reform real quick. I know, I'd imagine, you know. Right. Like I said, so. I, I the the the, the ten mo the line hammer thing is very interesting. Uh, I don't see people doing it. I and personally, I if someone did that, I could probably find the ways how to beat it anyway. So whatever. Um, yeah. But hey, whatever he wanted to call out, that's fine um no sure. allies hey we're rocking that still <laughs> yeah um characters on chariots and or monster mounts take a slot of that chariot and or monster from the zero to three restriction okay he just wants to be very hard with that restriction normally characters take the character slot and even if they're on a thing doesn't count toward like doesn't count towards that slot i guess yeah so again um, we're pushing we're pushing way more towards just blocks of troops right right so which, yeah, like I said, and once again, maybe this is an issue of being such high points for a game. Maybe not. Um, detachments use one of the zero to three slots, uh, and proxies are welcome. WYSIWYG. Um, you should follow what you see is what you get. Um, AK, and here's yeah, here we go. AKA, don't put a plastic toy, My Little Pony, out as your lord on Pegasus for Petonia. Uh, okay, thanks, yeah. buddy. I'm an adult. I can. Okay, thank you. We're moving on. Well, yeah. Oh, sorry, like that. If, I mean, yeah. Anyway, uh, uh, game. Um, 
The tournament will consist of five games of Warhammer the Old World at 2,500 points. Uh, picked from 15 available armies and Ravening Hordes, Force Fantasy, and Legacy PDFs. Great. Three games will be played on Saturday, two on Sunday. Each game will have a time limit of three hours, 15 minutes for setup. Uh, players are expected to finish their game turn if time is running out and not start another one. Okay, that's that's pretty typical stuff. That's that's fine. Yeah. Uh, no issue there. Um, scoring. Uh, let's see. So, scoring differential. Um, up to plus three bonus points can be achieved games via scenario objectives. Um, victory point differences. So, zero to 110, blah, 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 2,000. So, it's a 20 nil system. Which we haven't seen in the other packs yet. So, that's kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. I've never, uh, I, I mean, I kind of, you know, curl the upper lip about that, but um, I've never actually played with it, so I feel like I shouldn't have an opinion on it, so until I do, uh, I've always kind of, I've never really understood it, you know, like what makes that, like how, you know, so it was just like, oh, well, I, uh, I, I, I tend tend, or I, you know, whatever the other numbers, sometimes 17, three, I, I don't know what they are, but there's always certain numbers that you get there. And I'm like, okay, so what does that mean? I, I don't, I don't like, obviously you won. I can get, I can understand that much, but I don't understand like how much you won by, you know, at 20 nil sounds like you won by a lot. Right. Well, yeah, but, you've scored, you, you, have two, you, <laughs> killed, you killed in total with banners and everything, 2000 plus points. So yeah, okay. that's, that's what 20 that's is. That's how you get a 20 nil. Okay. Yes. So All the closer right. you are in score, the less points you both earn, but you can both earn points. I having played that at square based, I didn't hate it. Yeah, I don't know. It's just a, it's just a method of scoring, right? Yeah, you know, exactly. Like, there's there's nothing wrong it, with it. Is it necessary? Um, it's just another lever you can pull, and this isn't even a comp thing. It's just a fun. It's not. It's like it's like the sports score. This could be a whole episode debate, which maybe we'll do one day. Because yeah. I, I I'm willing to argue for it if you want to argue against it, even though like I'm not opposed to going not using it, but. You know, at a big event, you have to have a way to, to figure out what the minor is, oh, and yeah. what the what the major is, and everything. And, right, and it, and like they said, but th this also plays in line kind of what this pack's reading like, which is an old eighth edition fantasy, where they just adjusted it slightly to fit old world, as opposed to being a new pack written for a new game. Yeah, that's just how it is, and that that, that is what it is. It's it's fine. Yeah. Um. And it does the overall scores. Excuse me. Um. Terrain table size seventy two inches by forty eight inches. I bet that's six by four. Yep. <laughs> uh, inches. Okay. Um, impassable. Like the name says, it's impassable. No, you can't land a flying model on it. You could just say flying models can outland on it. That's that's fine. Yeah. Uh, ruins. Difficult. Infantry. Blah blah blah. Woods. Follow the rules for ruins. Interesting. I thought all the woods would follow the woods. Hey, hey, hey whatever. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's it's you know, and this now this also these changes here. He knows what terrain he has to put out. Mm -hmm. I don't. So I'm not going to judge this till I see tables. And I've not seen the tables because this event hasn't happened yet. So um, water difficult. So like that's fine. Terrain is its own beast. And we're actually going to mention that briefly here in a little bit. But sure. Um, of course, paint scorer, sportsmanship rubric. I'm, I'm honestly afraid to click up the nose, Neil. <laughs> like... I'm honestly afraid to see what the sportsmanship thing says, so I won't. Oh I won't do. I've, it. I've I've actually kind of seen it, so. <laughs> okay. All right, and then he he lists the uh, um missions out as well as a score sheet at the bottom of each. So, pretty nice. I like it. Uh, this isn't this isn't a bad critique. Uh, this is just more of a what I would do is if you're going to put the score sheet in the pack. Put game one on the very back and go backwards so you can rip off the back sheet only. That's 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 the key move right there. That's a veteran move, yeah. Yep, yep. So yeah, so that is that pack there. So let me So Neil. Alright, I'm just gonna I'm gonna close the PDF thing here. Bring Let's take a look at the sports stuff. You got you got the sports stuff there? I, I, know, I feel like it's important to look at that. Alright, let me I, I'm gonna do this one on the fly, so everybody just bear with me. I, I scared to do it oh, what? <laughs> Back rest, stop working. i feel like it needs to be it needs to be talked through so also i accidentally changed the on my uh my, my pc here so if you hear random noises in the background that, like weird ones it's because, like when i'm clicking because i forgot to turn those off <laughs> all right i'm gonna open it see if we can get it up. adobe and 
realm. Yeah. But while it's opening up, you know, what I will say about the pack so far, like what we talked about was um, it's just, and I think where a lot of people have had issue with it is it's, it's at a certain point, if you comp so much, you're no longer playing the old world. Yes. <laughs> um, and, and again, and I think a lot of what people have taken issue with, and I'm trying to be fair with this too, yeah. is that it's still very early. So to say that X or Y is a problem in the amount of fun you can have in the game or X or Y is well, that NP, um, you know. It, the, the issue is, and like I said, and as a TO, you decide how, like, you decide how it runs. Now, personally, my philosophy, I never liked like, local events. Run the event you want to play in because you're probably still playing in it. Right. Um. But when you get to major events like this, I mean, the reason I took over Nova is because I kind of made a call out of, of it for Age of Sigmar, and I'm, which was, this is a national level event, needs to act like it. Like, you, there's different expectations, I think, at the different levels of events. I'm not going to go to a national level event where the TO is going to be like, I know how this game is supposed to be played, this is how we're doing it. I'll be like, I will just won't play there, I'll go play with my friends. <laughs> right. Locally, yeah. it's like you know, and then locally, no one's going to be that harsh. They might be like, "Hey, we're going to try these, just to see what the game looks like." Which and locally, like, okay, sure, because also I'm not paying money to travel to do that. Blah 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 blah. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, my my issue is like, okay, you know, the wizards thing. Okay, for sure. Okay, one level four. All right, so that's fine, mm -hmm. right? But then it's it's another change, and right. it's another change, and it's another change, and it like and it's, it's another. It's, Changes on changes. I say it, it reeks of someone trying to tell me how the game's supposed to be played when it's like no one knows how this game's supposed to be played. I'm sure even people right. that wrote it are gonna be like, let's see what happens. Yeah. Um okay, so the sports score, it's just the simple you f you fill it out. Um uh so there's five, four, three, two, one. Uh there I, I don't mind this. Uh Number five is my Felix to my gut wreck. Okay, so clearly, you know, and it's just fun things. And level one's going in the book. Um, two's a snobby high elf. Three's they ate gobo shrooms. And four is mm -hmm. we should share a barrel Bugman's with. Okay, that's fine. Um, you could just put numbers. He wanted to get a little flavor text. I'm never against flavor text. Yeah. Um, but here's notes. If I don't hear cheering, see high fives, etc., then it's not a five. I don't know about you, Neil. I I, I have that. never, as a TO, <laughs> as a TO, been able to survey the the field for high fives and or not high fives. Yeah. And if I had not seen those high fives, would have assumed that this is just now a not a good game. Right. Right. Um, I trust I, my people to to figure out if they had a good game or not. Now, right. granted, there is the issue where we could talk about of everyone just puts fives. Right. Um. But here's but the other. Here's like, the, I, yeah, I I may be a, an introverted person playing another introverted person having a blast of a game, right? Yep. I, maybe yep. I'm, I'm yep. not yep. that guy who's gonna you know you know bring out the noisemaker and uh, be passing out shots back and forth, right? That, that and if that is that is what you have to do, then you're. I don't feel like it's a genuine thing, you know. Like right. I feel like you're playing there's, to it. There's very few people that can be that all the time. And are right. that person all the time. Uh -huh. um, okay, let's look at the other side. If you're going in the book. If I don't hear arguing or judges being called multiple times, etc., then it was not a one. Okay, Neil, I don't know. If I hear arguing in an event, I walk over there and I tell them that, I, 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 like, okay, we're clearly not communicating. Let's resolve the communication error and get past whatever's up your guys' butts. Right. I don't want there to be arguing in an event. We're playing war games. Yeah. If and you're, doing, right, you're not playing war games it. anymore, you can just leave. But right, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, also, judges being called multiple times, real quick. You know, I don't know how many times you're going to be like, I got to look in the book, or hey, judge, can you clarify this? We made some weird situation. That's yeah. going to happen a lot. It's going to happen a lot. Now, granted, this event yeah. is still months away. You're still going to have it because <laughs> there's going to be people it's that a, it's a major event with hundreds, possibly hundreds of people, right? Maybe a hundred people. I'm not sure the size, uh, but it's, it's a, it, you know, it's yeah. a national level event. It's, so it's it going to be a lot. Of, it's going to be, be a lot of people there. Right. And I'm sorry, I've played 10 games of this and I have to dive into my book and I'm 
questioning rules and stuff like this in every game I played. I'm questioning less and less every, every time I play. But right. how, you know, I'm still, there's going to be people with a lot of questions. That's just the way fantasy has always been. I, I am at least 30 games in, and I'm still looking up things because you're going to encounter these situations that you're just like, huh, don't know how we got here, but let's figure it out. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, okay, um, moving on. Oh, that was the sports. Uh, the paint rubric. Um, I must have failed to open that one. Oh, well. I'll see if I can't. Right. Yeah, that's fine. Paint rubrics are paint rubrics. Um, I, I, I've written a terrible paint rubric, and then Matt fixed it the next year. So um, I am in no place to judge those. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but let's see. Real quick. We have one more pack to look through, and then one thing that's sort of a pack. Um, but Akron Brew Brawl. Uh, like I said, and we set Nova aside. Uh, like I said, we're not trying to attack the person. I don't jive with the way that person is a TO. And I would not go to the event with that current pack. That's all I'm saying. Uh, I'm not saying it's not their right to, to make it that way, but I'm saying it's everyone's right to decide if you want to go to that. I would not, personally. Um, I right. feel it's a little too heavy-handed, and I feel like I'm being treated like a child with some of that wording in there. Um, right. But hey, to each their own, and I hope it's a great event. I do hope there's some potential changes and a little lightning of of some things, but, you know, I look right. forward to seeing the event, and if it's a wild success, I'm not going to eat my words. I still have my opinions, but good for them. It right. worked with the, what yeah. they had it, so uh, no wishing ill, just yeah. not my type of In the event. end, you know, with any event, and, and I've I've run plenty, you've run plenty, oh, right? I've screw, I've I always, so I always ask people to vote with their feet. Okay, yes. right? So, you know, vote vote with your feet. Either walk in or walk away. You know, I mean, and that that's all you can do. And I don't think you know, as a TO, if somebody walks away from my event, then it wasn't for them. And that's right. fine. You know, and, he, and and vice versa. And here's the thing too. Like I I learned it real hard, real fast. But you know, being a TO is hard, and there's nuances and things you need to learn. And yeah. I screwed up so much stuff, so much stuff, like really hard screw up stuff. And may, maybe the person doing this like maybe they're newer at this so hopefully they're just they're going to get the lessons before they you know uh yeah. before it becomes a bad thing when it's just like an internet thing where everyone's like ah this this pack is silly um yeah. but yeah, yeah but like everyone's going to have their own style so um it's like uh, to be honest too, like, i look at that pack i'm like it feels like they're just more of a more newer to and they have right. a, a lot to learn as far as etiquette and stuff like that but yeah, if somebody wants to dive into both our histories of being a TO, you can find multiple things we have screwed up. I could, I, have not been well. I could, so. I could present you with a group of uh, probably about five individuals, and I could be like, "Hey, would you please tell these kind folks how I screwed up TOing really fucking hard?" And they would gladly do so because after the event when we had it, I am now good friends with those people because they felt comfortable to come tell me those things, and I was willing to listen and grow and learn. That's the key. Mm -hmm. If you don't. Then, then fuck off. But if you are willing to listen, grow, and learn based upon what people tell you about the, your shortcomings, you can become better. <laughs> I right. strove to be better. And thankfully, those people were kind enough to tell me my shortcomings in a very honest and open approach. And I was willing to listen. And like, and now I have five great friends in them. And I've learned how to be better. So, hey. Right. There we are. Moving on. Akron Brew Brawl. No. Oh, sorry. You have one more comment? Nope, nope, I said enough of that. Okay, enough of that, yeah. Akron Brew Brawl. So this was another one that you sent me um, in your local area. It's an old world. I think it was a one-day event. Um, they're playing on the 44 by 60, probably because that's the mats they have. That's fine. Mm -hmm. yep. um, bring your dice, bring all that. Army Construction, they're playing 1,500 points, which also I think in the book said that's a good place to play that 44 by 60 is 1,500 point list. Yep. yep. Mm -hmm. Um using old world uh once again ravening hordes forces fantasy and any arcane journals um uh blah 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 doesn't say anything about legacy armies so i think that would be the one thing that they chose not to do legacy armies for this potentially i'm not sure yeah uh, i don't see it listed mm -hmm. now that now that could be either an omission on purpose or by not thinking right um, but like I said, that is a lever you can pull in a comp world. You can say, you know what? Mm -hmm. We are just going to focus on these ones. That's all we're doing. And it's like, okay, sure. And then if you're wondering, you know, email, call, whatever you got, whatever, find out, just ask them, you know, yeah. the legacy army. Just know. 
yeah, like I said, uh, that's fine. But like I said, that, that is a potential thing. But yeah, always ask because maybe it was just forgotten. Uh, I, Akron Brew Brawl is clearly not a Games Workshop event, so most other events are allowing those things. But maybe they're saying, you know what, we're not going to allow them for whatever reason. And if that's the case, you know, so you vote for the feet. But that that is a lever you can pull. We've discussed. Mm -hmm. um, his modeling and painting here, players' code and policies, judges' quit policy. Um, we expect all players to play through the game and not feed. Because it screws up tiebreakers with their scoring and all that. So essentially, it's like please finish your games because otherwise scoring gets bad and can cause some gamey stuff. Now this is more of a local event, so yeah. that could be more impactful, you know, with collusion and stuff like that. But uh, scoring, uh, pretty much, pretty much they're just using what's out of the old world rule book, which is nice. Like I said, it's a very this is a very simple event. The only like they don't even care about the rule of three. They're not limiting allies from what I can see. Um, mm -hmm. The only thing that I see here is comp is they're not using legacy armies. That could been, yeah. That could. I think been, when you start getting down to yeah. like you know the thousand, twelve hundred, fifty, fifteen hundred points, you're really limiting so stuff so much at that point yeah. already. You know. Yep. Short, but, you know. But listen, this is a very simple. And like, this is just like you can just say we're playing the the game out of the box. Let's go. Right. There's yeah. nothing wrong with that either. So. Yep. Um. Yeah, and, and I like that because as far as event packs go, like we've just saw four very different event packs. One that's mm -hmm. a little bit more gentle, one that's for a very odd type of game system with the doubles being in play, one that's very, very harsh, and one that's just kind of like, go, have fun. Yeah. So, um, the, any any other thoughts on that before I move to the next, next one here? Not really, no. Okay. So the next fun. thing I want to show... Um, so... Uh, over at Square Based Podcast, uh, so Rob, technically the Honest War Gamer, and Val, um, I think Rob did most of this work, um, but because uh, he had one or two events now at his little arena there, the, the TSN arena, um, mm -hmm. and he was doing something very special with terrain guidelines, um, where there was multiple maps, and whoever was going first got to shoot. Wait, so whoever was going. I'm trying to think how he did it. There was three scenario or terrain maps per. Okay, there's three terrain maps per game, and whoever was going second got to remove one of those maps from the pile and said, "Okay, so here's here's terrain one, here's terrain two, here's terrain three. As far as like a layout, yeah, I'm going second. I remove number two. Neil, you're going first, so you can choose either one or three. So that uh -huh. way it helps kind of dictate, like, okay, if I'm playing in a, against Wood Elves, I'm going to remove the one that has all the trees. Now, do you do that, though? My question is, though, you got, you got to do that before deployment, right? Correct, yes. Yeah. That, so think, you don't really roll for turn then until after you deploy. Or, or, maybe, you... or maybe it was... I, I forget exactly. I, I apologize. I'm probably screwing this up a little bit. Go check out the yeah. Squarebase GT where they talk about their event. He does it in a lot more detail. Yeah, um, but I did see that as well. And but it's, it's an interesting way to do terrain. It's and, a, yeah. and then it's a very interesting style of comp where it's, I'm removing the thing that's clearly good for you. Right. And I'll pick, and then that second person chooses the thing that's clearly not as, that either, that's the best they can get. Um, Are you a gun line? And did you choose the one that had all the hills in your deployment zone? Right. Gotcha. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I, I forget right. the, I, I apologize. It wasn't, I, I forget how they chose it, but like it was, there was three, the person who was going to be going second or, or on the short end of however that was played out removed one, the other one chose the other two. Yeah. Um, are you are you a Bretonian army and you want to choose the map that has all the natural terrain features so your green knight can pop out wherever the hell you want it to? <laughs> right. And this is like I said, and there's a point like he does terrain maps, the standardized terrain, which that's I don't hate that. That does make things a little bit easier as a TO, the standardized terrain. That way you have a map in there. Before the game begins, players can set it them set them down set it down themselves. Mm -hmm. But terrain rules, I think, in this game are very good and very impactful. Uh, I, great, <laughs> um, you know. But there's things to keep in mind of like, do I want a hill in each person's deployment zone? Do I want a tree dead center of the field? Like stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so here he, he talks about his wise three variations. Uh, you'll notice in the pack maps provide three variations. Having variations mean can drastically change how one mission be played. Because uh, that's the thing, like, missions are dictated 
for the round and you choose the the terrain for that mission um for instance, you could dictate round one and five of the event to have the same mission, but modify them different terrain layouts. It also means that there isn't a best fit for any one army, which could allow army to become dominant. Um, so just this philosophy here. So he, he has the terrain picking system, which is what he does. And it's, that's a fun way, and it's very unique. Uh, it's it's kind of like unique, and it, it's very unique in its own way. So it's very cool. Um, what is the terrain picking system? Okay, so here, let, let me get it right now. So, so our audience knows what I'm talking about. Uh, even when we pick maps, we might negatively affect some armies. Let's say as a tournament organizer, I pick terrain layout A for a mission, and it's hard for dwarves to do well on it. I've now affected players wanting to play an army they love, which is always something I strive to avoid. So instead, I, he he calls it a TPS. Uh, TPS report. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. The system works by both players rolling a dice at the beginning of the game before terrain is set up, but after you explain your armies, as this may affect your decision. The loser vetoes one of the three terrain maps. The winner chooses one of the two. Okay, so we, we, we show up. Here's my army. Here's what it can do. Open list format. Clearly, you can see I have lots of shooting, Neil. Yep. I won the dice roll. You're going to remove the one that gives has all the, all the, all the hills. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> there we go. And so yep. it, it's, it's meant to keep games interesting. Uh, kept, kept to keep from hurting any army specifically. Yep. Uh and like I said, mix it up a little, little fresh. So it's 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 a fun system. I I, I don't hate it. It'd be fun to try it out. Um, yep. I, do I think it's gonna be adopted ev mind, everywhere? No, but it's cool. Yeah, keep in mind too. You know those events that uh, that Rob runs up there. They're they're meant to be competitive events, right? Well, they're, they're meant they're, to be. They're meant to be competitive, competitive fun events. Right. Yeah. And they're but they're but they're meant to be balanced across the table too. You know. So. Um, Right. If, if you want, you know, maybe if you're playing more of a narrative style thing where you like, you know, you know, the dwarves are obviously going to pick the uh, pick the hills and you want to play against that or try to try to beat it or whatever else, you know, you can do that. Right. But this is this is more for like a match play thing. And I think it's great. I think it's a really good idea. Yeah. So. And he even goes far to dictate like, you know, everyone has different terrain. He has 3D printed stuff. I have custom built stuff. He said large pieces are about 10 by 10. Mediums are 10 by 5. Smaller 5 by 5. Mm -hmm. Easy. And then, yep. he, he, and then he actually has the terrain maps laid out here. Um, so open an open battle layout, a breakpoint layout, and like you can click through them, and it's a printable version. So again, like this is all for free. Just go to honestwargamer.com yeah. and search the old world stuff, and he'll have it all up there yep. for free. Um, I think it's really cool. And if you are a TO who's looking to run an event and stuff, I highly uh, yeah, I, I encourage you to go do that. It sounds great. Yeah, and even if you don't want to use the, the the tps system that he has systems redundant there but the tps or the the you know you can just come here and just oh i'm doing these missions and just grab these layouts and just use them people aren't picking but he just gives you a train layout that you can put in your pack like that's great free resource it's wonderful plenty here they look beautiful uh that's the last thing i want to end on it's 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 not necessarily about packs i think they did like pool of three and probably no allies and clear the Obviously, legacy is fine. Like I, I haven't looked at the pack for the event, but just this was a cool thing that I want to make sure people know is out there for their games. Even if you're at home, grab one of these yeah. layouts and just do it. Just have fun with it. Why not? Yeah, it makes it very. I have uh, one last thing to kind of mention uh, that I did see out there um, that I'm not a big fan of. Um, so I can't remember if it was the Akron Brawl um, pack or what, but there's there was one locally to my area up here. Um, that decided uh, you had to be all GW models. Okay. So, um, you know, hey, you know, if if you could buy them all, yeah, <laughs> I think that'd be great. Um, and if you're new um, and you want to play, uh, I don't know, high elves, you know, you're gonna have to go scour the eBay's. Oh, right? you know or, what? Or... Here, hold on. I'm gonna pull this out every time. You keep vamping for a minute. I'm gonna go get a model. All right. Just, just, yeah. just screw this. You keep okay. talking for a minute. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. So, you know, my, my thing is with this is like, I, you know, there, there's 3d prints out. Some people want to have models that are more individual, even if, you know, you know, as long as it's, you know, you know, within a, a whizzy wig, you know, you can tell what it is, right. I can see that's a dragon. That's a high elf on a dragon. I don't care whether it's GW model. If I think it's a cool looking model, then and I want to have it in my army. Why shouldn't I be able to do that? Um, uh, now, with unless, reserve, unless it's a GW, GW and you're running and, and you're having your own event, then by all means, you know, be GW only. That makes sense. But if you're not GW, I don't understand 
the point of that. So right, uh, unless yeah, whatever. But hey, Neil, I want to show you. I know you've seen this. This is for the audience. I'm going to show you an official GW model. It's a it's technically Altharian gram, but we could call it a wizard on a griffin. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's an official GW model from who knows how long ago. That is a Warhammer uh, Fourth Edition, Warhammer yep. Fantasy Fourth Ed. I want to say circa 1992. Yep, or three, somewhere around there. So I will yep. happily blue tack this to a base <laughs> of appropriate yeah. size, if you'd like. That's an official yeah. GW model. Yeah, yeah, comes right in that uh, right in that box. Yeah, sure for does. sure. Sure yeah. does. Anyway, <laughs> there's actually a bolt thrower and a uh, uh, there's, there's a Grom the, Grom the Paunch, Paunch, yeah, as well as. Uh, uh, an orc wyvern, uh, shaman on wyvern. Yeah, <laughs> we can go old school here. I, I, yeah, I oh, only yeah. have this one though. I don't have the thrower. I don't. I can't remember where I got this, but yeah, that's that's amazing. That's yeah. amazing that you own that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so that's uh, that covers our thoughts in the old world event packs and all that sort of stuff. Uh, last little thoughts on that. I like the rule of three. I'm a two thousand point person. I would consider. Mm -hmm not allowing named characters. I don't want to say I'd do that, but that would be one of the things I would consider. Um, and to be fair, that's probably all I'd probably put in my pack as far as comp at this time. 2,000 yep. points, possibly no named characters. Everything's Everything else is allowed. Arcane Journals, Legacies, and Rule of Three. And for me, it's, uh, it's Rule of Three. Cool. Um, I don't mind special characters at all, so mm -hmm. they can be in. Right. Uh, play with your toys, mate. Um, and then, you know, uh, if I was going to mess with uh, anything more than that, then I'm going to run more of a narrative style event and make sure that it's known. Um, sure. That that's what I'm doing. So if I'm going to start, you know, uh, taking away wizard levels or something like that, then it's like, hey, this this is what we're looking for. We're more relaxed, and this is what I want the kind of narrative to be for the event. So right. For sure, and like I said, it's it's fun, and and we're still early enough that it's fun seeing different styles out there. Heavy comp, light mm -hmm. comp to see where we end up. We'll get there at some point. Uh, yep. Because the more I can learn, the better TO I can be if I ever get to TO events for, like, say, the US Open for um, Old World stuff. I, I want to be mm -hmm. as knowledgeable as I can to help guide that in an appropriate way. Uh, hopefully we can allow Legacy Armies in the future at some point. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> That's the only thing that hurts. Um, anyway, on to new AOS news. Yay! Yay! So back up with the browser. Let's bring that back up here. Yay ish today. <laughs> Yay ish. Okay, well we got we got a few articles to go through. Yeah. Uh, so what do we got here? Oh, it's got every. Now we do that one. All right. So yeah, here we go. Let's start with the simple one, Neil. What is the priority role? Mm -hmm. And it, if you're an Age Sigmar person, you know what the priority role is. Um. You could potentially double turn at the start of each turn. You're gonna roll off. Yep. And the winner gets to choose. Mm -hmm. uh, often turns for instance, the double turn. Um, obviously, if there's a tie, the first player in the previous round chooses the turn order to prevent the double turn, potentially. Mm -hmm. yep. and, and as always, the player who first sets up the army chooses the turn order to start. I'm going first or second based upon my lower drops. Uh, so this is going to be a very quick article to glance through. Yeah. Um, I'm going to throw a little opinion piece in here uh, that doesn't matter, but it's me screaming into the wind sure, and I'll scream. continue to do so. Please. I hate, I hate the fact that um, whoever deploys first gives you the turn. I think that's stupid. I, I, I don't know why we keep doing it. It is I, like, yeah. you're acting like, like, like the, the advantage you get by, by, uh, uh, I don't know, being the first one or be, like getting to know where everything's deployed and, and still having to deploy some other things, there's no advantage there. I'm sorry. That's, that's not, and if it is an advantage, it's so minuscule that like that, should, let's, let's do it like in uh, Warhammer fantasy, roll the dice anyway, give the guy a plus one. I'm fine with that, but let's roll the dice just so that there's some randomness. So you can't plan around going first or second. I hate that. I hate it so much. Right. It's I'm done. now uh, two things here. First off, I, I do agree. I don't like, list building lower drops as part of my list building fun that Ugh. doesn't it doesn't scratch an itch for me that's just annoying um because yep. we'll get there when we get there with battalions um, sure second though if we look at history the polion he learned how to deploy faster so he got to dictate battles a lot easier so from that sense of narrative 
I get it. If you're able to deploy first, you should be able to choose how things maybe go early on in the game. So, just devil's advocate there. Just throwing it out there just to help ease your mind a little bit. Mm. Now, there is a little downside to this now. That if you ever choose to take the double turn, you cannot score battle tactics for that for that turn, that round. I like that. That's I interesting. Do, I, go ahead. You explain your thoughts. I'll explain mine. So I think it, it so it disincentivizes a little bit, possibly, um, taking that double turn. Now, the question is, is what do battle tactics give you? Which we don't know yet. Right? Is it, other than scoring right, we don't know for you. missions, uh, yeah. Let's all just for a second assume it's points. <laughs> so, yeah. like it has been, right? Um, so if a battle tactic scores you points, I think, you know, good players are going to make sure that they're in, and have always historically made sure they're in position to not have to worry about the double turn. That's what good players are going to do. Right. So, and good players are not going to sacrifice points. So in that way, you'll probably see less double turns being taken by good players, but also good players already were planning for that in the first place. Okay. So um, I think you're going to see probably newer players going, ooh, double turn. Right. <laughs> and then oh, for sure. themselves out of some points and then, you know, wind up paying for it. So. Right. So the way I, I'm looking at this, now granted, we're, we're using our opinion based upon what we know of battle tactics now. They could change. Mm -hmm. They could be easier. Who knows? They could be worth not a ton of points. Maybe the points aren't that important. Um, but like, also, how do you score? Like right now in tournament scoring, battle tactics count towards your overall score. Mm -hmm. So if you're a high level player, you're never taking the double turn mm -hmm. because well, you absolutely except, except in one scenario, right? Um, you'll never see it from one ter battle round one into battle round two but you w probably will see it a lot in battle round two to battle round three. But if scoring is still dependent on getting every battle tactic to come in best overall or best general, they yeah, will yeah, never right. take it because they want to yeah. score those battle tactics every round. Sure. Now that yeah, said, yeah. that prevents double turn outright right. from, from those high level players. Yeah, um, the difference between winning the game and winning the game with a perfect score, right? Right. Because if you do take it, now that's that that's assuming two two. that's assuming the scoring is similar to what it is today. We don't know that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now the other thing is too. Say it's not. Say the opposite is. Say just winning matters, and there's a scoring system we have based upon just winning or losing. It doesn't matter how many battle tactics you get. Battle tactics just help you win the game. Winning the game gets yeah. you all the points you need. Then you start getting into things where, especially on like high level tables. Okay, the ones that are being streamed, you know, at the end of the yeah. day. Okay, um, we're in rounds three or four. Uh, I roll, I take the double. Okay, good game. We just don't have to play. Because yeah. they're only going to take the double when it's a guaranteed win. And if it's obviously a guaranteed win, people just won't, they won't like, okay, good game, shake hands, move on. Let's let's rest. Yeah. So that's yeah. that's that's the two concerns I see with that. That all comes down to how scoring happens. We don't know that, or how hard battle tactics are anyway, because maybe battle tactics are actually hard. So maybe you yeah. encounter a situation where it's like, I have zero battle tactics, I can score this time, but I'll take the double turn because I can't score any anyway to at least yeah. put myself in a better position to win. That's potential yeah. too. So there's a lot of play. I don't hate it. I like that it's harder choice now. Right. Um, Me too. That's it. But yeah, yeah, I'm I'm happy that the priority rules here uh i'm with you i'm not the biggest fan of the winner goes first as far as lower deployments because of battle regiment <laughs> but yes um that's a different issue and we don't have to play with battalions because it's a module i'm gonna put a flash an image up on the screen right now boom it's a module commands mm -hmm. terrain magic army composition command models and battle tactics that's all modules so who cares play how you want <laughs> right all right anyway so let's move on to the next article we're going to look at. How building your army has changed in hashtag new AOS. All right, so current edition, 1,000 points. You have three battle line, one hero, blah, 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 blah. The new edition maintains these incentives of risk and reward, but takes a new route to emphasize flavor and flexibility. Army now comprises of one or more regiments. 
every army is built up at least one regiment and can only and can only take a maximum of five. Each regiment is led by a single hero, single hero, and mm-hmm. can include up to three other units or four if it's your general's regiment. These regiments represent the retinues, warbands of a company, blah, 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 blah. And it goes into things where we're looking at Lumineth. If you have a Venari banner blade, he can include any Venari units with their regiment. If you're an Alarith, Alarith stone mage, you can include any Alarith units, um, along with Venari Arlen wardens, who are common core among Lumineth. So there's still going to be a common core battle line type thing, but we're not mm-hmm. have battle line. So like, I do like that because battle line if was just stupid. <laughs> it was it was yeah. like you could take anything you wanted anyway so like let's not have to play that mind juggle game yeah uh, also it calls out things like techless if we look at lumina still who's like a major player he can take whatever the heck he wants right more or less um and there is things you might like this a mighty lord of corn can be accompanied by his gore chosen so there is going to be some heroes that part of their regiment can be more heroes because if you're looking at this as it is now the max heroes you can have in an army is currently five unless you have a mm-hmm. hero that allows you to take other heroes in the regiment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. I, I actually, I really like this. Um, each one of these regiments is a one drop. We should mention that as well. Yep. yep. Um, and then if you take anything outside of the regiments, They're auxiliary. those become auxiliary. And auxiliary... Um, Are individual drops. Right. So you don't, so that's you don't going to increase the number of drops to whether you get to choose first or second. So, you, so. you're going to have at least one regiment, and then you can have up to four other regiments, or just all the auxiliary. So, mm. yeah. So you can still build however you want, and if you don't care about you know having that first turn or choosing whether you have that first turn or second turn, go nuts. You know? Exactly. Uh, so I like that. You know, so uh, I can now run potentially you know twenty gun haulers again. So. <laughs> right. The. Uh... <laughs> The thing that the thing that uh, I worry about is um, obviously they're trying to create these power pairs between these models, heroes and units that should work together, and I don't yeah. I don't mind that. Um, but I'd rather it be expressed through the war scrolls. I think, like, hey, this hero is going to help these units, and maybe it is yeah. already, and I just don't know it. But like, I feel this might come down the line where we're like being forced. As opposed to this is what makes like sense, you know what I mean? Uh, I don't know. I it's, think it's that's a long term worry. I, it may never happen, yeah. but it's 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 just that's a, a thought where I could see like uh, okay, that's that could be the bad. That could be the bad the bad place we take take this. It to. sounds like it sounds like they're sticking to a pretty narrative look into these, which I do love. Yes. Um. So, and then uh, you know I have always kind of wanted to be an advocate for like you know hey maybe i want to take an aspiring champion well if you ever looked at the war scroll for that it's garbage it's all garbage you're never going to take it you know right. the guy's terrible he's a buff piece if he's anything right um and so i used to think well what if what if having this guy made this other unit that wasn't that good really good you know right and, and so I, it's that that kind of thing i kind of like you know because yeah. it kind of takes maybe some of these lower level heroes and gives them a place you know, to be. Um, but let me say this too. I hope what we find is with these heroes that are, um, you know, branching down and off of, I hope they're, they're heroic. Yes. Right. I don't want to have an aspiring champion of corn who can't kill anybody. Okay. That's, it's not very <laughs> aspiring. To me, right. Okay. Right. It's not cool. All right. I want it to kill something. So, um, and I know that there's a place for support characters and support things like that. For sure. Um, but, but let's, let's, I really hope that the heroes end up being a little bit more. Well, I said we we will see that when those all all those rules get released and in indexes, um, it's all mm-hmm. fresh and all new, so it's like hard to it's hard to really say anything on that other than like loose ideas. Um, and something's going to be the best too, right? Yeah, something's going to have the best options. It's always going to happen. It doesn't matter what you do; something will be the best. Right. So you're going to see something get played more than another thing. Right. Um, I don't think it's going to. It's not going to really adjust too much anyway. Because like a lot of things, you want to have that power pair anyway. So it's just going to be, you know. And in fact, hero can somehow give buffs to everything in its regiment. That's that's amazing. That makes me feel mm-hmm. heroic. But we'll see. That remains to be seen. Um, here's a little image on forming regiments. Uh, you have one to five. Blah blah blah. Um, pretty simple. Just in case you can't read words, or you're, mm-hmm. <laughs> I guess. 
Uh, every unit within the regiment deploys together as a single drop, as you said. Uh, you can reinforce most non-unique units with more than one model, and while there's no longer any limit on units you can reinforce, you may no longer double reinforce units. Otherwise, the restrictions of the current edition are gone. Now, this is an interesting one, because I like running my Daughters of Cain as a Horde mm -hmm. army. Mm -hmm. um, I will say this. I think that change, that there's no more double reinforce, gives the rules team a much greater control over a Horde army and a pseudo-Horde army. Like, Skaven, right. that's a Horde army. Daughters of Cain mm -hmm. is a pseudo-Horde army. You can play it in a Horde style, but I should probably not have more Witch Elves than you have Skaven ever. This is you a will. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean, in a list. <laughs> sure, sure, um, sure. I sure. feel this is a good yeah. way for them to control that. Uh, yeah. And I thought about it. Do I like thirty Witch Elves in a unit? Yes. Do I have units of thirty lined up on my shelf right now? Yes. Does it bother me that I can only have twenty? No. That's fine. Right. I mean, and again. How much of a different feel are you getting if you have ten units of twenty witch elves? No, it's yeah, really, it's it's fine. It's probably that's honestly a, probably a better right. way to play anyway no. because now that now we, the points are probably never going to allow something like that, right? But the the point is like might. you can still have forty, still have sixty witch elves, and still have a look on the tabletop that you like. Yes. it's just left in the individual units, right? right? And and here's the thing too. My only my only like nuisance thing of it is that I have built my units of witch elves and sisters of slaughter in thirty. So now I have to go buy more to make them units of 20 because like they can have shields or not shields. It's like, okay, yeah. so mm, I have to go buy more of the things I love anyway. Okay, I'll, I'll get over myself. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, I, I don't hate that change. It doesn't really affect how I'm going to do things. I think it probably gives them more control too, like I said. So um, fine with that. Uh, all right, battlefield roles such as battle line, behemoths, artillery are a thing of the past. Thank you. Thank you. I'll say it again. Um, yeah. Once you've got a hero as your general, you have a ton of flexibility of how to build your roster. If you want to build a list that isn't that, if you want to build a list that's just a single hero and a swarm of doom wheels zooming around causing havoc, we won't stop you. But it will have an impact on the game you play because anything that isn't a regiment has the auxiliary unit, which we mentioned before. Auxiliary units are units you're picking from your faction outside the confines of a regiment, and they count as individual drops. So, for example, uh. Army composition. Player one has four drops. General's regiment, two other regiments, and one auxiliary unit. Player two has five drops. General's regiment, second regiment, three auxiliary units. Now, command points are very limited in this game, from what they keep saying. I think they say you, you generate one per turn. So you generate... I don't. We don't know what you start at, but you generate at least one per turn. And if you are the lower drop, you also get an additional one. I don't. What? <laughs> like that doesn't feel right. It feels like the person you're already you're already choosing whether you get to go first or second. You know, so right. So you low drop. You'll probably take second and employ in such a way, and you get a bonus command point. I feel that's wrong. I don't know why. That just like this is without yeah. reading the rules. That feels yeah. like why are you hurting? Like are you just are you just trying to force regiments that hard? Like, yeah. are you trying to for like you can take whatever you want, but if you take it this way, we don't we won't like it. And like, eh. that kind of goes against the philosophy that we have of Sigmar. No, Grant, we have not seen yeah. the regiments per se. I don't, I don't, I, like, what's it going to look like? I don't know. It's a, it's a race to the bottom again. It's a race to like the lowest amount of drops you can have. Yeah, and I just hate that. I hate it so much. It, yeah, and it, maybe one day it'll go away, but it is not this day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the the race to low drops is such a non list building exciting thing for me, right? Uh, and the fact too that like battle regiment that we had in the current edition is so mindless that like me as a person not thinking and don't care and hate it will throw my yeah. stuff into there because I don't have to think and it's also the best one. That's right. a problem. But I think they understand yeah. that. My my concern here with like battalions like this. Um, uh, I forget, I, I, we were talking about in the chat. I like the narrative approach of this, but I feel as if they're missing the point on what we don't like about battalions as a game, as a, as a fan base. I feel yeah. like they're just leaning into what we don't like a little bit more. Now, that yeah. said, <clears throat> I'm sorry, good. 
<clears throat> you're going to have multiple regiments. It sounds like the regiments are going to be small, right? So I think you're going to have multiple of those. So I think you're going to get some list variability. I, this is all me guessing, right? Um, so by that token, you're, you can, you're never going to just have one drop. You're going to have to have multiple regiments. You're going to have multiple drops, but you're still getting pushed into that, that decision-making yeah, tree. And that, that's going to be just, it, it doesn't make list building as fun, you know? Right. It's, um, it's, if you look here too, it talks about they're trying to implement soft incentives to push armies that are more thematic and maintain a healthy mix of units and heroes. Yeah. I don't think and that's I like what, that that, I like that idea too. That's a great philosophy. That's not how, that's not what's going to happen. Yeah. Unfortunately, which is a shame. Uh, now granted, yeah. This is all being said with two things you got to keep in mind. One, we have not seen the full picture, so subject to change. And two, put the image back up here. Don't make me tap the sign. These are all modules. Yeah. <laughs> you only have to worry about this if you're at a match play event. Yeah. Um, True enough. Now, next part. Um, on top of regiments, you'll also be picking your sub-faction. They're now called battle formations, which... That is, I guess army composition is the module. Oh, here's the thing too with modules. This is a nice thing. They could change what a regiment looks like. They could change that command point thing. They could change mm -hmm. anything in here. So even if, if something happens and we're like, ah, we actually don't like this and it's not good for the game, they'll module it, change the module. Easy. So I do like that. It's easier for them to adjust on the fly without impacting other parts of the game, it feels. Mm -hmm. um, in theory. All right, All right anyway. So, sub-factions, they are now called battle formations, which have been refocused around the fighting style of an army rather than the specific background. I read to that point, and I was like, ah, I like my narrative background, blah, 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 and then I kept reading. Mm -hmm. This invites players to mix and match a battle formation with their favorite color scheme and any unique heroes they like. Um, okay, so, I look at, I look, on one hand, I love Kraith. My Kraith way of life may be changing. It may be going the way of the Liberator. Um, it may just not exist anymore. At least as far as a sub-faction rule. But there might be a battle formation rule that's very similar. Or, more importantly now, I can always be from Kraith. But I can play in a way that doesn't suck and lose me games like Kraith kind of always did after a certain point. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, I sure. So... I like it. It's fine. It just doesn't bother me. It, you know, we can always do whatever we want. I, I mm -hmm. kind of like, and I'm curious, and I'm kind of excited for the idea to see what it means yeah. as far as a fighting play style as is my formation yeah. over I think the this, lore that I associate with more. Yeah, this this is something they did. I think this was honest. Yes. Of them, right? Of, you know, hey, you're only going to take this best thing anyway. <laughs> okay. Right. So now you can do it in whatever way you like and right. still have this good thing. Right. And here's the best oh. part, too. It, with Kraith kind of not being there, I can just be the mm -hmm. Tarathian cult in full, full glory. Mm -hmm. This is this is yeah. the Tarathian cult's battle formations now. Love it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Other important aspects of army building are also sticking around. Artifacts, power, heroic traits, which used to be known command traits, because um, I believe they said that now they can go on anyone that's not the general. Um, great. Well, uh, mm -hmm. Spell lures, prayer lures, and shiny new manifestation lures, which we'll have details on later. I that might mean summoning, that might mean endless spells. I don't know. We'll find out. I have zero clue, and I I'm not even going to speculate because that's a that's a yeah. rabbit hole. I don't need to. I'll wait for yeah. them to tell me. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, here heroic traits replace command traits operating similar manner, except they can be on, given to any hero, not just your general. That's great. I love that. So, uh, Neil, do you like the? From what you've seen, like there's there's always gonna be things where we're gonna be like, eh, it's different. Maybe slight concern, but things I like. Mm -hmm. I mean it remains to be seen. I they'll be fine. It's still Sigmar. Yeah. We'll still have fun. We'll still play. Yeah, yeah. I'm actually I'm I'm pretty excited for it, to be perfectly honest. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I, I, I just I just talked about the things I don't like, you know, in terms of low drops and stuff like that. But overall, uh I think it's a good change. I think uh I think it's a better system than what we had. Mm -hmm. So um, you know, of course we have we'll wait and see what, how it plays out that's you know we'll just keep saying that over and over again but uh um, sure. but yeah i mean for now for what i can see of it you know i'm positive so yeah, I'll, yeah I'm, I'm still i'm still positive um mm -hmm. and I, I, I trust matt rose and ben johnson over there on that team 
to write an excellent game system. Um, mm -hmm. tr you know, trust but verify. And also, once again, these are module things. Mm -hmm. If I don't like the army composition with that command point for whatever reason, I can just say, like, hey, we're using the army composition but no command point extra. Or uh, if you finish deploying first, it's just plus one to your roll. I can make my own module and slot it in there, and it's not going to hurt anything. Right. Which I like. Right. So that's a good thing. Yeah. Uh, and I, I really think, like, too, like, the way that this module thing is working out is they're definitely hitting a balance between a, a good game for competitive people and a good way for new people to come into this game. So, yeah. so far, it that, feels like a win. Yeah, it seems like it's very much tailoring itself to that, and I think that's that's a good thing. Yes. So. But there's a little downside today about mm -hmm. what's leaving the Warhammer Age of Sigmar range. Now, bum, bum. we have had a year of warning. They were telling us things were going away. They didn't tell us what till now. Mm -hmm. uh, we had speculations. Uh, I think everybody saw this list and had things were like, really? Okay. Yeah. Um, well, let's, let's, let's dive in. And like I said, you could go like, this is a business thing. This is a whatever thing. Some people are very, okay. The internet was quite upset in a lot of ways. Um, can I just say this though? Um, they've been upset every time this has happened. Oh uh, yeah. They always are. Um, and justifiably so, right. you know? Uh, yeah, I guess we'll we'll say this here from from our our view, and you Neil, know, if I don't speak for you on this, just just tell me to shut the hell up. But mm -hmm. if you are upset and bummed because of this, that is perfectly fine. You are allowed to be bummed and upset by this, but always remember how you respond to a situation is uh, is more important than the situation itself. Does this suck? Yes, but it's not going to end your life. <laughs> Right, right. Yeah, right. like sure, like some people are like, oh, I, I saw people out there like, they're like, like, you know, don't tell people to just go proxy. It's like, well, you can proxy if you want, or you can be yeah. bombed and not. Like, or you can burn your mouth, do whatever you want, but you respond yeah. in the way you see fit. But mm -hmm. like, you can't control situations. You can only control how you react to a situation. So yeah. if you're bummed, you can choose to be bummed, but don't let it take you down too far. Don't don't feel like Ooh. you wasted your time. And also, I'm gonna I'm gonna say the I'm gonna say the quiet part out loud. If you're really angry about this, but I've not seen you play that army for a couple years now, shouldn't be that upset about it. <laughs> right. Well, I don't care, the thing I don't is, I don't care how beautiful like, painted it is, are if you weren't using it. Did you it, did you burn your AOS one, your AOS two, and AOS three books? Did you do that? Yeah. Okay. Because if you did, then you can't play with those models anymore, right? In terms of you know their actual rules. Um, if you didn't do that, and you have some buddies who used to play this with you and have all those same books. Um, you can go back and play those editions and play those models the way they used to be played if you want to. Yes. The other thing is you can proxy them, right? You know, if I have a bunch of old liberators and we just saw there's a new liberator coming out, right? Oh, then I, I can use my old liberators. Yeah, no no <laughs> one's gonna compare no one's gonna complain. Even GW yeah. is not gonna complain at our events if you use old liberators to say new liberators because they're liberators, who cares? Um yeah. but also like I said, it I I've, I had saw people they just want to jump on the bandwagon of being upset about it. It's like, okay, yeah. well you have beautiful painted stormcasts that are no longer officially supported models you weren't playing them anyway so they're already display pieces they're yeah. still just display pieces you still have a beautiful right. painted thing like don't be upset yeah. about that uh, but... and, I, and 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 i get it too you know i think like companies have to do this if you go look at magic the gathering well right? okay but i'm like, gonna stop you there because this well, there's a lot more time and effort and heart put into this like I, that's I, well which, that's where i'm getting to okay. right yeah. is, is that's just a piece of cardboard and it's easily replaceable and you put a lot of time and effort and that's why i think you're allowed to be upset about this yes you right? are allowed to be yeah. upset about it but yes. i think from like a company standpoint like it just kind of has to be done you know like and you just hope that you're not the one on the chopping block honestly and if you never want to be the one on the chopping block Go play a chaos army. It's never going away. Uh, well, okay. we're gonna hold on. Are you sure about that? Well, are you sure about that? Okay. Are well, you sure about that? One of the big four is what I'm talking Actually, about. Actually, just play an elf Nurgle, army. Nurgle, Slanesh, you know. Um, if you play an elf Horn army, you're always Siege. good. All right. Anyway. All right. That's what I'm talking about. I, I yes. Yeah. You're, you're Beastman, a... I think we saw the writing on that wall since AOS one. <laughs> uh, okay, we'll get there when we get there. But anyway, yes, you're yeah. allowed to be upset. You're allowed to move on and still be proud of the models you have and the effort you put into it and keep them as display pieces and yep. proxy them if you choose. All right, anyway, let's move on. 
So, two factions, Beast of Chaos and Bones, as well as a number of old Stormcast Eternals from Sacrosanct, Sacrosanct and Warrior Chambers will be receiving free download digital battle tomes. These will feature new background rules and considered legal for competitive play until summer 2025. So you have a year with these old things. If you don't want a proxy. And then they go Legacy. Uh, Legends. Legacy is Old Le- World. I'm sorry. Right. Legends. Yeah. We encourage you to continue using your collection for casual play and continue to support these blah 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 blah. Uh, you know, whatever. Alright. Additionally, a number of older Warcry and Warhammer Underworlds warbands for the Slaves of Darkness will go off sale and enter Legends. Many more Underworlds warbands will remain on sale and will be supported only by Digital Legends War Scrolls in the next edition. A handful of those units, mostly using old resin miniatures, will also be moved, removed to Legends, blah 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 blah. Which the fact that there are still resin kits around was kind of shocking. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, so we are losing Warrior Chamber, Sacrosanct Chamber, the entire Beast of Chaos, and the entire Bone Splitters. I won't lie in saying I saw Bone Splitters coming. I was still shocked at Beast of Chaos. I was like, why would they get rid of a whole army like that? Because like with the Bone Splitters going away, there's still orcs. There's still Iron Jaws. There's no like the, all the Beast of Chaos now are like random things in Slaves of Darkness, like Omegrad Third Maturge or whatever. The thing you want. is though, is they've never had a direction for that army <laughs> literally since AOS point whatever. They haven't had a direction for it. They had the old models. They never supported it with anything yeah, new outside of maybe like one Warcry warband. And one hero. Warcry, There's one hero. Um, one Underworlds. Hero. Underworlds. There was yeah. one hero too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so it's just like you, you like just based on them not doing anything with the army at any point. I mean, I kind of saw the right. It's, I, especially now that you have old world. And it's just going to transition into old world. Well, they even say and... that. They even say it's going to transition. They're, they're, they're going to keep selling Beast of Chaos stuff. Yeah. It's just going to be rebranded and be old world only. Right. Um, right. But I, I would say this. I was still kind of shocked because, like, they have terrain piece. They have endless spells. Like, yeah. I was shocked uh... to see this one go away. I thought this would be one of the ones where it's like, hey, we're going to update it eventually. It's just going to mm-hmm. be a while. Which I was like, I, I, I was truly like, that was the one where I was just like, I actually wasn't expecting that. Yeah, I think this is, and they have a, uh, Beastmen didn't sell great in Warhammer Fantasy. They were always Beastmen the. Beastmen didn't sell great there was the beat, in AOS. They're always the beat up child. You, you, but, read, you read the end times, every other battle is like, I know a million beast of chaos died because we didn't right. know how to build <laughs> this thrown in there like they're the, Yeah, they're just the fodder, right? You know, they're the, they're the uh, foot clan troops of uh, for the Ninja Turtles, right? Sure, yeah, the guys yeah. you beat up and you, and you, you throw away, right? Um but that was the kind of the thing with them is it's like they never had like the, like they're in the narrative just as the fall guys. Yeah. And and, and again, they just well, never like did it's... anything. They, they thought that the, the thing was not selling well, but this was classic GW. It's not so like yeah. we haven't made a new model for them forever, yeah. um, but uh, yeah. they're not selling well. I say, well I, yeah, yeah I, I will say bone splitters going away makes sense because you don't need them in the faction and there's other cooler things out now. I think yeah. Beast is on GW for not supporting it, and then them doing that whole final, the, the whole fantasy thing again, where it's like, oh, well, they, people aren't buying it. So, well, you're not really supporting it. Right. Because I think Beasts yeah. are a pretty cool army, um, and I'm kind of sad to see them go out of age. So far. I think they are, too. I think they could have been a very cool army if they yeah. were given the support. How uh, Would they ever be you know, on the same par with your other four Chaos Gods? Um, sorry, I don't include the clan. The, uh, the, the you're rats. about to, sir. I know I am. I know I am. <laughs> Uh, I'll fine. never do it. Hashtag yep. not my <laughs> chaos god. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> so, um, but anyway, um, yeah, I think that's really because it, it wasn't just like, oh, in AOS they didn't sell well, but they really weren't selling well towards the end of fantasy either, but nothing was. Nothing you know? was, yeah. Uh, but, but again, they didn't give Beasts of Chaos a, a new battle tome. You know, for, oh, sure, yeah, yeah. Not, I say book, you know, in, in fantasy forever either, you know, so they were kind of, they, they've always been the kind of forgotten child is why I'm not surprised by it. I say I, it, it was a surprise by me because I thought they would eventually care about it. But anyway, let's move on. Um, mm. All right. So Stormcast Eternals, what are we losing? The Cellstar Ballista, which was always a push the fit kit. Mm. Evocators on Dracolines. Okay. That's a cool model, but mm. get rid of those. Evocators, Sequiturs. Okay, so there's the Sacrosanct Chamber stuff gone. Mm-hmm. Uh, also losing the Knight Harauder, <laughs> Mr. Dude himself, the Knight Vexler, 
Uh, my favorite Stormcast model, actually, the Lord Castellans. Mm, it is a good model. It's 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 just my favorite. That that's the one that like grabbed me. I have I have like it's three three in my army, like two kit bashed, one just core. Um, mm -hmm. and I'm happy I have them. Um, Lord Celestin, Lord Veritant, Lord Ordinator, which I don't think I ever picked him up, and I need to because his his you know sums out guns out. I gotta I gotta get him before he goes away. Uh, Lord Exorcist, Knight Azeros, which I have him. He was always fun for those old 1.0 tricks. Mm -hmm. uh, paladins, Judicators, and Liberators. Prosecutors. I'm sad about the Paladins. I, you know, and I, yeah, I always liked the uh, the Prosecutors with the Javelins. Were really cool looking. Yeah, yeah, they didn't stand up, and yeah, you couldn't put them next to each other and actually, yeah, yeah you know, yeah. get them within coherency. But they were cool looking models on their own. But but, but here's the I thing. Didn't... Like adjudicators, liberators, and prosecutors, we kind of saw them in the trailer, so they're probably just getting updated to the new armor with the That's new scroll. Like we That's see, it. we've seen the liberators; they're getting new versions of liberators. Yeah, I think we're gonna get it for adjudicators and prosecutors as well. Paladins, I don't know because we also have like the annihilators, and they kind of fill that role. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of stormcast. They did definitely need to cut some. Um, let's see, Gavriel Sherhart's gone. Thank God, that guy was a bitch <laughs> <laughs> gabriel surcharge yep uh voris starstrike because he's the named lord ordinator um and he was from the uh um malign importance characters uh which is funny because he's gone but the dark oath war queen war queen just getting a whole new army behind her <laughs> mm -hmm. uh castigators with griffhounds that's fine because i think they were pushed to fit astria Soulbright. uh aventus firestrike i feel bad about Soulbright because she was just in a story with, um... I I have a feeling because she died in that story. I have a feeling she's going to oh. get reforged as a new model. Okay, I you know that was feeling... the first model I ever bought for my daughter, and the first one she kind of painted on a little bit. And I always planned on going back and giving that a nice paint job and everything, but eh, we'll see. I yeah, just keep it. It's a it's a collector's piece. Yeah. Um, I might pick up an Aventus Fire Shark if I can get my hands on one because it's like it's other than the derpy face, it's a cool model. Mm. Um, because if I could change the head, that'd be a sick Pegasus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, Ma up, Masters of the Sacrosanct, which was also the starter edition 2.0 push the fit model. I have one. I don't know where I got it because I didn't buy that box set. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then the Errant Quester, which that's an interesting one because the only way you could get that was at Warhammer World. Mm. So I have one, but. Are they doing a new version of him? Because that's I'm just looking for an excuse to go back to Warhammer World. You know, all right, just just support. Yeah. Me. <laughs> <laughs> it's never been. All right. Soon after release, a new edition Battletum containing most of these War Scrolls will be made available to download. Free. Blah blah blah. Representing these warriors who are simply too devoted to their cause to return to Ezir. So you have time to play with it. And I saw people out there too. They're just like, you know what? I, my mine are just hyper veterans, and they're waiting for their reforging and blah 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 blah. So, but that's what's going away for Stormcast. A Skaven. Got a lot going away here, too. Um, but they're also, we're clearly seeing they're getting a line refresh. So what's going to make the cut from here to get refreshed and what's not? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but let's see. Clan rats are clearly gone. Acolytes, warp fire throwers, rattling guns, gutter runners, rat swarms. I don't think rat swarms will come back. Uh, if I'm honest. Yeah, I don't think... Master molder. Sure. The arch warlock, which I'm kind of sad because he's super cool. Yeah. He's probably he one of my favorite Skaven models, and I don't play Skaven or really like them that much. But yeah, and I think he stands up too. I don't think he. I think I he does too. Not... Like, he might be one of those ones. It's like if I find him, I might just buy him just to paint one up because he's going away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's see, Warp Grinder, Warlock Engineers, Rat Ogres, and Giant Rats. That's fine. Yeah, please remake those. Uh, Storm mm -hmm. Vermin. You can make cooler versions of those, even though they're not bad. Plague Priests. Fine. Um, Plague Sensor Bears, Gisales, and Doom Flayers. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's, that's fine. The, the uh, Screaming Bell and the uh, all that. Plague Furnace, yeah. Which If the Plague Furnace is still around, are we getting new Plague plague Sensor Bearers? <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm curious to see how this, this line refresh is going to happen for this army because it's, it's very unknown. Yeah. Um, it will but be very interesting. Th it was a much needed refresh, so wait and see. All right. And then, obviously, literally every Bone Splitter. <laughs> If it's yeah. a bone splitter, it's gone, including the Wurgog Prophet. And then the only thing here is um, uh, the... We'll see in fantasy. Yeah. Herd Raka's Mad Mob. Now, if you're a...
fantasy player and you want to have these orcs over there, try and find that. That's an Underworlds Warband. Mm. They would make great heroes for it, but that's going to be probably real hard to get real fast because the rest of this stuff will be available. I don't know if they'll keep making the Underworlds Warband. Right. All right, and then Slaves of Darkness, which is... Let's see. Uh, with the arrival of Dark Oath, Slaves of Darkness have finally found their definitive mortal followers. This means a number of warbands representing the wider worshippers of chaos in the mortal realms are being retiring from the spotlight and the range. Mostly involves warbands from the previous edition of Warcry, as well as Kagar's Ravagers from Warhand Warhammer Underworlds. But they're all receiving Legends War Scrolls. Now here's the thing. They didn't say that they're getting rid of Warcry. So these might just be good for Warcry only. Well... I don't know if Warcry is like Underworlds where things kind of get cycled out. I don't uh, know. I haven't not, played Warcry, so I couldn't tell you. Not, uh, not but I know that's so what they much. do with uh, Underworlds. It's like every once in a while they're like, yeah, and that's no longer being played. Not so. not so much from what I've seen, but this could be the case. I mean, Warcry with with Warhammer <clears throat> the Old World taking off. Um, I don't know if that takes away production time from other things. So like Warcry and Underworlds might be slimmed down or go away. Who knows? I don't. I have zero clue. Um, but some of these are really cool kits. Um, like I said, this, like I, ne I never really had any of these, but it's like, hmm, maybe I should buy a box of Splintered Fang or Corvus Cabal, which is for bits because they're kind of cool. Um, mm -hmm. Iron Golems, I'm glad they're gone because I hated them on the battlefield because mm -hmm. they get on an objective and they were double reinforced. And I was like, well, fuck, can't, she can't shift. Yeah. It. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's um, ridiculous. Horns of a shoot is kind of neat. Uh, Maybe pick that up if you're interested in Chaos Dwarves, since that's the same god, and use it in Old World. I don't know. I think there's only one dwarf, though. Right, but like they could be just like other fun things in the army, maybe. I don't know. Conversion, Neil. Broaden your mind. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, and then the Untamed Beast and Kagar's Ravagers. Uh, so that's... Okay. And then Everything Beast of Chaos was going back to Old World. But they say they're very open here. It's gonna be available for Old World. It's just no longer available for Age Sigmar. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there's other ones too, and these were all just resin models, mostly. Uh, so the Branch Wraith, which was the old Dreitra model. Saurus Eternity Warden, which was probably a character in Old World, I don't know. Valky the Bloody, which we were all hoping we would get a new model. But I think we got mm -hmm. the lady on, the new Varengard lady, because she's a spear mm -hmm. and horns, and it's like sad, but I really want Valky to come back. Um, Skyla and Fingrim, I never really attached to him. Uh, Madcap Shaman, mm -hmm. Big Boss on Gigantic Spider. And the Mistweaver Saya, which, how has she been around this long? How did how did she get by this? She Was I, she? At, wow. Really? Silver Tower. And also her counterpart. She was that, gone a long time ago. I thought, mm -hmm. well, I, I don't remember seeing her be gone, but is the Tenebral Shard still around? Did they not remove him? No, they, yeah, he was Legends a long time ago. I think okay. they both were. Well, somehow they think she survived. I have both of them. They're part of my daughter's cane as just proxies, but like, yeah, huh? Yeah, great, great uh, dark elf uh, wizard right there. You know, for your fantasy. Yeah, no, uh, it, but... yeah, she's a great kid. Buy her if you can. Um, mm -hmm. but that's it. So some big cuts. I gotta rip that bandaid off at some point. So let me just close that yeah. off here. Bring us back to us. We wrap up the show here. They right. You know what off. I'm surprised didn't get cut is dark elf models um, and a dwarf models from Be cities. Possessed. Um, I am too, if I'm honest. But I can't believe that's still around. That, <laughs> I can't believe you got rid of that stuff and the other stuff, really, which just needs to be ported over to, to fantasy, even though we don't sell dark elves anymore. Um I, I am shocked as well, if I'm honest with you. I thought they would. I, I have a feeling they will at some point in the future, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, especially as Old World continues to sell really well. Um, the only problem, I love that too, because if you take all the deep possessed and say, hey, you know what, Old World, everyone's going to be like, mm -hmm. okay, that's fine, that makes sense. If you take out all the Dark Elf stuff, Old World, that works except for one kit. The Doomfire Warlocks also make the Dark Riders. And if you cut the entire Dark Elf line from cities, there's no home for Dark Riders currently. But if you have a new line coming out with Mal Malarian, Malakith in the future, you could just put those Dark Riders over there. And that way that kit's both both uses of that kit 
are still viable in Age of Sigmar. They will not cut that kit because it's in Daughters of Cain. No. Unless, well, they, yeah. If they cut it from Daughters of Cain, yes, they could cut that kit. But mm. they've been so integral in the story lately with Crethusa mm. that I have a feeling Dark Riders are a sticking point. They have to find a home for Dark Riders. They either go, they don't make sense in Daughters of Cain. Doomfires barely do. Mm. So where do you put Dark Riders? It has to be another Dark Elf themed army. At which point I would say when we see Malarian, I think Dark Riders will be in that army. I think when you eventually get Malarian's forces, you're gonna be it's gonna be like a Lumineth <laughs> release where just everything like that one just won't fit. But But it'll be a home for it, and then they can cut all the dark all the dark elf stuff from cities without cause because there's a home for that kit. Because it'd be really weird to have that kit that you don't use you don't, you can't use half the bits for. Hmm. I don't think that jives with games workshops like philosophies. Well, I guess we'll see. Yeah. But anyway, it's fine. Band-Aid's ripped. If you're bummed, you're allowed to be bummed. Um, yep. I hope it doesn't keep you down for long. Find your next passion project. Dive in. Uh, enjoy the time you sent. But with those models, they're still good. Like, you can use them for other stuff. You can display them. They're fine. <laughs> like, don't be, yep. you know, don't, don't, don't burn them. Don't throw them away. Uh, they don't pay rent. They don't need food. So, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, Neil, closing thoughts. Uh, we finally got through our old world pack talk, and then there's so much Age of Sigmar news. So, like, you can probably guess there's going to yeah. be Age of Sigmar chat every podcast for this new AOS mm -hmm. each week. So that's going to be a almost a permanent segment. It feels. Yeah, I, mean, I think everything that could be said would be said. I just, uh, I think if you have the Stormcast models, just wait and see what. You know, they re-release. I think that might have been one of the reasons why they released the new Liberator. Just uh, to show you that. Just to show you that, hey, you know, this kind of stuff may be remade. So, Yes. All right. Well, I hope everybody's out there. Like, just have fun. Uh, do the best you can. It's it's a hobby. Enjoy it. Um, mm -hmm. I kind of want to go get, like, an old box of Liberators just to have them. <laughs> just, I don't know why. Like, it's just, like, because they're going away. Mm -hmm. like, a, like a collector's piece. I'm not, that's yeah. weird. Um, I've got two in the hand. Well, one in the hand of uh, Archeon up there, and another one dead on the ground. That's enough for me. <laughs> I have, I have thirty. All right, so, but like, mm -hmm. I still remember. Like, I still have the like the like I kit bash the original one that you got in the White Dwarf. Oh man, there's, yeah. there, there, it's weird. There's gonna be a nostalgia hit for me on the original Liberators. Yeah, I mean that's be. the guy who was outside on uh, on the statue. There, He's you still know? there. <laughs> yep, still there. Had to rip that guy down. Now they kept that old space ring up for a long time, so. <laughs> we'll get uh we'll get we'll, actually they should just do a statue of sigmar yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, yeah you know that'd be fine all right everybody uh we will catch you next week so until then make sure you uh have happy hobbying times and stay stormcast strong as always right neil that's right mm -hmm.